Hey, man. Hey. I got like five minutes, maybe four. Oh. <laughs> oh, it's okay. Um, no, I, I, I'm glad you've uh, asked. Uh, I'm, I'm, I, I haven't been on this app in quite a while, so everything's very, very new to me. So I'm trying to figure out how everything works. Oh, yeah. Oh, with the new links and, and how the show's. Yeah, the things. new links, the new uh, like the new just the new platform. So last time I used this, like you only could have like two two uh, participants per podcast. Oh, uh, whoa, cool. man. Whoa. Yeah, whoa, it's whoa, been whoa. it's been probably about a year. Yeah, I used to be on here quite a lot though, like doing um, you know different metaphysical, philosophical, you know uh, podcasts, and uh, you know just just con you know connecting with people and. Um, I decided to give it a try again and now uh, see how it goes. But um, I I always have like, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Oh, uh, I'm, but yeah, I'm just here to con- you know just to kind of connect with people. I, I mean, I I really like to. Uh, I really I love to like pick people's brains, and I love to have my brain picked as well, and. Um, you know, it, it's it's it is my calling here, so I'm uh, just kind of flowing through with that and seeing what kind of conversations you know I can end up having, you know, on a on a deeper level. Cool. Then then, uh, man, I wish I could stay longer, but uh, I actually I, I can come back eventually, I think. But um, if if you're interested, I'm I'm somebody who reads the Bible in Hebrew. My dad, I am. I love psychology, neuroscience, I'm a software engineer, and, uh, yeah, I try to remap my whole brain to, um, the Bible from a Hebrew perspective, and I'm sure something will be interesting inside of my head, and my learnings. Okay. Uh, I follow a lot of Gnosticism, a lot of esoteric, um, uh, I mean, a lot of people say, like, you know, with with the things that I, you know, talk about in my podcast, people are like, oh, you're new age. No, no, I'm not new age. I'm old age alchemy, uh, esoteric, you know, very, you know, I, I go everything from the Emerald Tablets to the Nag Hammadi to the Baba Vagita to the. Uh, I mean, you know, it's 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 a different kind of platform. I, I don't find one specific truth and one thing i find that there are many truths and multiple things um because i mean just to be honest i think as human beings we try to understand the understandable and um that's where like i find the thrill of being alive and existing in in this you know in this reality is is the search the seeking the journey of seeking for um the indistinguishable or at least trying to explain what is unexplainable yep yep i agree it seems like we have uh, a habit towards trying to find what's on the other side and we get bored of of the how mundane it is to to be a part of a system and a way of thinking always want to like find the thing that everybody else doesn't understand. It's like mining for Bitcoin or, or gold. Right. <laughs> People don't have this, this scarce idea, this idea that they forgot. Let me, let me be the, the source of wisdom. Yeah. Yes. Um, the way it feels to me at points is that it seems that people have taken God and locked it into a box and lost the key. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> so it is. And then that that and this weird how do I say this? And now we're looking for it again and that's been the pursuit of all societies. Uh, what is, we got what science is, is, that are trying to explain how the cosmos works. Um, but who's to say that it, it wasn't already known Long time ago. For some reason, right. we seem to not want to trust their information. We rather kind of create new tools to just re explain what they explained. Right, right. Um, and, and, you know, and, and that 
that statement kind of brings me back to what I said before, like um, as a calling. Um, one of the things that like I try to <laughs> see, like I, I'm not a teacher because I'm, a, I'm a, also at the same time a student, but when it comes to my experiences and I do believe at the fundamental level of all things that makes us us is that we can only understand what it is that we have experienced. So without the experience comes a lack of understanding. And this is something that seems to be very alien and foreign to most people in Western culture. Um, it doesn't have to be necessarily. I'm sorry. I, I, but I, I do have to go now, but I, I glad, I'm glad you see that because people think that they're experiencing things that are outside of them. But it, that is in psychology and neuroscience, that is physically impossible. Your, your brain has already adapted and mapped itself to, to the world, and it continues to get new information. And all it's doing is just like using that information. But but some people believe they can they can see what's happening outside of the world, outside of them. Then sometimes you just have to speak their language and. and, and be as nice as them to really be able to understand what they're saying. Uh, so it takes empathy as well. Diving into other people's 360 worldview from 0 to 33 to 100. Because every, everybody's 0 to 100 is different. Anyway, I gotta, I gotta go. Um, okay. Uh, yes, we go. I'll probably be in the audience. Yeah, thank you very much for calling in, man. I, and I, I, we, ha- we gotta talk sometime. <laughs> sure. Have a good one, man. Uh, flipper. <laughs> uh, not too much. Um, I, uh, yeah, uh, you know, just as I was saying, you know, I mean, I, I don't know what kind of uh, conversation. Um, I, it's been a long time since I've been <laughs> back uh, here on stereo. I, I usually podcast over on Spoon and Anchor and spotify but um i'm back here i'm i found myself back here today on stereo uh and i'm looking uh i i guess just to kind of connect with people on a deeper level of reality than than uh what is i i I guess you would call traditional so what you trying to what you trying to know what you trying to learn oh i mean i'm i'm always in the process of learning and it's it's not really it's not really like a sense of what I'm trying to learn because to me, there's never really a coming into trying. Like, I mean, there are <laughs> things in life. There's, there, you know, there, there's things in life, you know, where you can try to do and try and try, try again and you well, succeed. Right, right, right. Um, but there are some things you just cannot try, try, and try again on. There are some things that are just beyond trying. Sometimes it's the trying that inhibits you from succeeding, especially when it comes to the understanding of a deeper level of reality. And, you know, I mean, Sometimes these words get jumbled up, you know, like we're, we're using concepts here. Words are just words, you know, they're, and, they're, and they're clumsy. But what I'm trying to say is, I suppose, um, there's, there's a release. There's a release of uh, letting things come to you by the attempt of not, not trying at all. So I just go with the flow um, and uh, I try to help people as well as I try to help myself, you know, and there's that word try again, but still it, it's, it's a conditioning, you know, and I guess there's, there's, there's a process of unconditioning and unlearning what we have been programmed to think. I mean, you know, I do my best not to say try, you know what I'm saying? Because most of the time when I'm trying to do something, I never do it. (laughs) Right. 
yeah, 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 yeah. I can definitely hear you. Um, oh, I mean, yeah, I mean, we, we we're, we're told to try these things, and I, I really think that you know, at the very base core of our being, we realize that these things that we are conditioned to try to do, we feel as absolutely meaningless. Um, at least in the sense where, like, you know, we, 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 uh, we are abiding or uh, assisting with the system itself, you know, I mean, everybody, we're, we're conditioned from childhood to, to do that, you know, everybody says, do this, learn this, here's how the system works, the school says, obey or fail, the government says obey or jail and religion says obey or hell. So we're conditioned into this frantic, perpetual anxiety where we are I mean, truly starts, not free. It starts earlier than that. It starts when you were a child because your mother tell you to either do this or, you know what I'm saying, you'll have some type of punishment. Right, right. It's, it's, it's the conditioning that continues to perpetuate conditioning and yeah um i think we're at the beginning stages of uh, a point in our lives and history where that is beginning to shift into a new paradigm a different kind of paradigm where i mean we're just for example just only as an example we're just now learning that human beings or at least um homo sapiens themselves not so much homo sapiens sapiens but homo sapiens have been around potentially millions of years and we're finding evidence going back hundreds of thousands of years that we've been around a lot longer than we've been conditioned to believe and uh these people were you know knowledgeable they they were an intelligent ancient race of people all over the world with very similar um technologies that uh they all shared when it came to the construction of their of their monuments and megalithic me megalithic structures and such but this this is this is an awakening for some people that are paying attention i think that's what we need to do because i mean everything that's happening in a i'm, I'm sorry go ahead oh well, no i mean you know a lot of that is just like i think of it as common sense you know what i'm saying why would you think that it it wasn't people here at the beginning well i mean the beginning that we were informed about i mean just as a you know as, as a uh, a structured understanding especially here in western culture here in this part of the world we have people that believe the world is six to eight thousand years old it was created by <laughs> a single it was a, it was created by a single creator and the single creator was a creator of unconditional love, created human beings, non-perfect, but expected perfection, or else there was eternal consequences to suffer. Now, this is this is a hang-up for a lot of people in this world, which is why that is the dominant mythology in, in this part of the world. But there was also the scientific mythology that came about that basically said that everything came from a big bang. There is no point to anything. There's no point to our existence. And that means that the universe itself was an orphan. There was no mother or father to, to, to give birth to it. So we're all alone. So either way. A lot of, a lot of the things we learned was basically like theories or assumptions. Um, misinterpretation. A lot of the things that we've learned or that we've been taught and raised in and conditioned and programmed to believe is misinterpretation. Um, they, uh, I mean, it, if you really look at where we are here in the country, not that we live in a bad country at all, but there are aspects behind the veil. So, that, do, so, so do you do you believe? So, how do how do you believe man started? You believe in like Adam and Eve? No, no, I I believe that Adam and Eve is a great symbolism, but I also believe that there is there is a uh, a literal um 
understanding to it, but not in the way that it's presented to us. Um, there, there is with Adam and Eve. What we are taught is that God was in the garden and created Adam and Eve. Now, I, I mean, like, and this is a really like let me, let me break this down, like, so we can have a really at least deeper understanding as as to the story. When we talk about Adam and Eve. We need to look at all the aspects of the story as to what the story contains. Mm -hmm. The story says God came and created Adam. All right. Adam was the first being, which was male, male. Okay. So male needed a partner, which means that God in all of its divine, according to this belief system, all in all of its divine being, had a, a a understanding that Adam needed a partner in in foresight. All right, Eve was an object of a manifestation of foresight, which means that God didn't know he was going to create Eve before he created Adam. But we live, but you know, but 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 these people believe that God knows all. So why was the object yeah. of all knowing? coming up with a new idea that was foresight. I mean, that I mean based on it's it's different based on I can answer your question, but it's it's different based on each religion. That that is true. It is based you know the answer is always going to differ according to, to the religion. But there are some questions that kind of get to the very core to the, the the misunderstanding, for example, for instance, just as an example, why is God, if God is the only God that there is, why is God a jealous God if there is no other God above it to be jealous of? You said if he's a if he's a jealous God. Well, that's what that's what we're taught here in Western culture through 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 uh, through uh, structured religion. It says that God is a jealous God. But how can the one and only true God, the highest of all highest, be jealous unless there was a God greater than he to be jealous of? But then again, that's only, you know, what I'm saying God is only jealous in certain religions. You know what I'm saying? In some religions, God is not jealous. But where does it say that, though, in the scriptures? I mean, where does I mean, this? It says he's kind of... I mean, based off the Bible, what you're saying is true. That's what it says. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. In, in the Bible, <laughs> God, what, 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 what I'm trying to point out here is that what we have been conditioned and programmed to believe here in Western culture is that God is more human than it is God. Because it's more like us than we want to give God credit for. And we overlook that very easily, surprisingly very easily. So was God really this this thing that we, I mean, we, we bow down and worship because we're supposed to be God-fearing human beings. We're supposed to fear the wrath of God, but we're also supposed to be... Um, accepting this this wrath and realize that god is a, a god of unconditional love you know and that was the whole purpose of you know according to the bible that was the whole pur purpose of jesus coming and dying for our sins so that we would be liberated from that circumstance of ignorance that state of ignorance where we carried sin, which I believe sin is just missing the purpose. I believe sin is a state of ignorance, not an action, I but mean, an action that, that involves ignorance and missing the purpose. It sways us off the path. I mean, the definition of sin is, you got to know the definition of sin. You know the definition of sin? The definition of sin is basically doing something that is wrong in the eyes of God that goes against his commandments. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. So if you if you if you have no recognition or if you don't believe in that, you know, there's no way for you to sin. Okay. But let's say as a sinner, 
which we are all born into sin, that the that c- committing an action that we would call sin is doing something also in the aspect of ignorance in the action that we call sin. We are committing an action without knowing the absolute fundamental effect that it's going to have, not on just the act itself, but on the people around us. There's an ignorance to that. I mean, if we were able to understand how it would affect the people around us, and then how it would come back to haunt us and affect us on a physical uh, of, on a physical condition, mentally, emotionally, physically, and even spiritually, would we commit that act of sin? Um, I don't know. I mean, my my look, my outlook on sin is totally different. Well, I mean, what what uh, what what people say about sin is these these are the laws, these are the commandments. These commandments are your way of buying your way into heaven. Basically, you are a child of God, and He loves you very much, but you're on probation. Because there's a heavenly father that has constantly got his eye on you. And if you don't do what he tells you to do, there are eternal consequences to suffer. So I don't believe that's true. Not by any means, at least not accurate. I think that the system itself based around sin and hell is a fear concept. This is where people are imprisoned to their own fear as to the point of coming into this world and the point of coming out of the world. Because you have one chance, one chance from this unconditional loving creator to get it right or you're fucked. So, I mean, you know. I mean, you know, like, I mean, you know, if you understand where you come from, you will understand where you're going. Well, that's well put. I also believe in the same sense, the place that we are all looking from. I'm sorry. The place that we are all looking for is the place that we are all looking from. Just another way to say what you just said. Um, So. We are in this process of trying to be as as good, uh, you know, morally and intellectually as possible. The the thing that we misinterpret, though, I mean, I'm not I'm not a famous leader by any chance. All right. Like, you know, I mean. Uh, you know, I'm not here with a poke gown and a crown and like, you know, <laughs> trying to walk around with all of this unheard of knowledge of things that like, you know, I find buried deep within the scriptures. But I see, I, I do see as a spiritual person, a person who is who has actually had an experience one on one with God, not <laughs> It's not really like as it sounds like I didn't sit down with God in physical form with a non-physical being. It was just an experience. It was a realization of unity between me and all things that exist that we call reality and even beyond reality. It was just that recognition of singularity. Um, And when you when you realize that is what we are. We are not separate from source. We are we are absolutely unified with all things that came into manifestation because we because everything came from singularity. Therefore, everything that came from singularity is part of the singularity, though it seems like it's many. Many ness is an illusion. So what we are trying to understand as a human race in our in our technological frame of mind at this point in existence in, 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 in our history 
is how do we untangle the untangled ball of yarn? How do we understand this concept of absolute I mean, unity? We just talked we about been, it. It's the, we just we, talked about it. It's, your, it's the kids. That's how you get it. When you come here, when you when you come here, all the things that you are looking to know, you already know. And you are taught and conditioned everything else. You feel what I'm saying? Everything I feel else you are I get what you're saying, but what we've been taught by the traditions of the past from generation to generation, even within our own families, have become a distorted and it's been and it has always remained a distorted perception of reality and what we are as a human being in this universe. Yeah. I'm not saying that they are wrong, but they're neither right. I mean, all it is, everything you, you are taught is based off an experience of somebody else. It has nothing to do with right. you. Know? Right, right. <laughs> and that's where, that's where that's where people like me people like who have this calling come into play it's it's a it's a learning to unlearn we have to learn to unlearn what we have been programmed and conditioned to think because we that's are what, not what we are told we are that's what i'm saying so it's, it start with the kids as long if you can stop the programming from starting you won't have to worry about taking it away right so let me ask you real quick uh -huh. Have you ever had an experience where you realized that something about the way the world is and the way that it's functioning, it goes against the very principle of what it is to exist? In other words, we have you noticed that? People are kept deliberately and intentionally in spiritual enslavement. I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, it's been like that for a long time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it has. Too long, if, if I can be honest. Too long. I, I mean, mean and that's what... I mean, you, the only way for you, to, for you to get rid of that is you will have to get rid of the people who's in control. You know what I'm saying? Right. Right. Yeah. I mean, well, that's the th that's that's the difficult part. I mean, we're yeah, so deep. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, well, you're, you're right, though. You're right. You know, we have to get rid of the people who are in control, but you can't get rid of the people in control because they are prepared for such an over a takeover of that kind because they know that at some point, um. There's a an amazing story, actually. Artemé, um, <laughs> I'm glad that I can see you participating. Um, I saw you in the other uh, podcast. I just want to fit this in real quick, Artemé. Um, I saw you in the other podcast, and I saw that you are very into esoteric and spiritual knowledge. Uh, that which is why I joined in the first place. Um, if you want to participate in the conversation, please by all means. I, I am very esoteric and um gnostic in my own way um as well and uh it, it's it's really nice to like actually have that kind of familiarity with people of that level of understanding of uh you know non-duality and and you know uh singularity and then such and such and such you know but um it, it's it's actually really nice to see that there are other people on on this app that have that um that kind of knowledge and understanding under the belt. Um, just really quick before I continue, uh, Flipper, I'm going to go ahead and uh, play some of these messages. Um, all right. Well, hello there. How's it going, guys? Uh, he left some time ago. We got Simon next. Hello, Forbidden. Hello, Flipper. Nice to uh, nice to be here. Um, I'm actually just going out. I've just come home from work, but I need to go out. But I would love to join you. I'd love to speak to you uh, about God and about Jesus and about the Holy Spirit. Um, maybe you'll still be on when I come back. Um, huh. And if so, hopefully I can I can join you and 
have a chat with you. Um, a lot of it's based on faith, um, but I'm I am living proof that there is a God. I'm living proof that God, uh, work, God is wonderful and God works in mysterious ways. So I wish you both well, and um, hopefully. If I'm able, I'll come back on and hopefully can join you and we'll have a chat about faith and stuff like that. But I'm happy to talk about anything as well, okay? Clean talk, stereo. All the best. Bye. Cool. Um, yeah, I, actually, there's a lot of points I agree with him on. Like, God does work in mysterious ways. But at the same time, I believe that it's you that works in mysterious ways. Even the mysterious ways in which you don't even understand yourself that you work in. Um, in that sense, <laughs> in I that mean, I, se- I, I can but, tell by talking to you, you like understand who you are, so you about to understand what I'm saying, right? As long as uh-huh. you understand who you are, you will understand who God is, and then you will understand that you know what I'm saying you are one of the same. Yes, exactly. Yes, a hundred percent. If you understand who you are as a being, because what what we all are is a fractal spark of divine light within us. We are just fireflies in the grand spectrum of the universe. We just contain the ability to take part of that light and apply it within to our bodies which is all part of the divine light in itself, which is, which is the singularity. It's light separating itself into many, but the many only belong to the one source. So when you understand yourself, you understand what you are one with. So that is, yes, what you just said is 100% effective and true into people's lives when they truly uh, come into the understanding like it's the experience of the experience that you are what you understand you are not what you believe you are belief only comes after the experience you can believe that you are one but if you haven't had the experience of being one with the one then you're missing the point and that's that's fundamental in our existence as a human being. Like that's where we need to get to. All right, I got one more here from Artemé. Hi. Yeah, I agree that education is so important, and also the way that we're educated, because um, that's where it starts. So wherever you're going, you have to consider how you start. And uh, yeah, education with kids is really impacting but it's always controversial of who and what get to your kids but you know hopefully if we communicate more everyone is more um, everyone understands more than that will start to go into the next generations as well thanks yeah, no problem it was a little hard to hear you there at the end Artemy, but um you know because of the the sirens but um yeah, you know, it, it, it's it's crucial what we what we program. Actually, I, I, I take that back. Um, it's crucial what we teach our children. But uh, um, long, long okay. What I'm trying to say is, long story short, here. When I was a kid, I was raised in the Nazarene Church. I remember being a child and feeling what I was being taught was absolutely um, was absolutely like in some way dishonest. I, I, I don't know what it was. I, well, I know now, but back then I didn't know. I, I was I was hearing with this God of love, this this this. God loves you. God forgives you. God, you know, you're a child of God. And, and that's why God, you know, that's why God sent his one and only son, Jesus. And I'm like, um, I'm like, okay, well, I mean, you're, you're talking about the sacrifice that Jesus made to save us from our sins. But yet, if we're a sinner, we still burn in hell. Yeah, but I'm saying that as a child, you have not done anything. You have not done anything. You know what I'm saying? So you are you're not a sinner. You know, you haven't done, you haven't made any sense. Right. So th- there's, 
that that's kind of coming back to our our, our uh, topic earlier, uh, Flipper. That's why I believe that being born into sin is missing the point. It's a being born into a state of ignorance. It's 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 when you understand spirituality on a deeper level, you chose to come into this reality, but you were not going to remember that you chose it. So you come into this reality, into human form, because we are not beings with consciousness. You are consciousness in the form of a being. We are not having a spiritual experience with a human or, or in human form. We are human form. Well, I mean, actually, I think I just said that backwards, honestly. But yeah. like, what I'm trying to say is, though, I mean, no, is that we are – basically. Oh, go ahead. We're, we're, no, we're spiritual no. <laughs> experience in form. That's all I'm trying to say. No, yeah, basically it's the, it's the same thing as, you know, you got to understand that you are not the body. You are the one that possesses the body. Yes, yes. We, we definitely are not the body. I, I mean, I there, there's <laughs> to be honest with you, here in Western culture, there's so many stories that even show graphic and detailed accounts of people who have these experiences, not not just here in Western culture, but even over in the Middle East. People, their experiences go back all the way to ancient times, and there's always a million questions involved. And there's always the questions and the questions, you know, but one of the fundamental things, though, is you are a process spiritually. You are what you are considering yourself to be consciously. This consciousness. What is this consciousness? What is this? What I is mean, it's you know, the, the conscious, your conscious is nothing but your mind. You know what I'm saying? That's all it no, is. No, I'm sorry. That's, that's, that's where it is. I mean, to a point, with to a point, I agree with some of the words you're using and some of the words, only some of the words, because. Everything, what what I believe, I, I want to get, I want to go deeper into this with you, actually. Go ahead. We are, everything in the universe is mind. That's the first and most, the first and foremost, most important thing to understand is that everything in the universe is mind. We are not a random aspect of creation that came randomly. We are something of an intelligent manifestation. We were we this was wanted. This was this was something that was desired to become into being what we have become. And this thing that we call mind is an is of course a self awareness of intelligence. And that's what the whole universe is. The universe I mean, is not go ahead. I mean I would I would say I mean the the mind the mind is an awareness because being the awareness is aware of the mind. The awareness is aware of the state of mind, of the state that's, of mind. That's what I'm saying. So if if, yeah. if the awareness is the one that is the aware of the mind, then there's no way that the mind can be awareness. Well, okay. Let me put it to you this way. I got to where I am. I'm not gloating. I'm not gloating. Like, honestly, this was completely random in my life. So let me put it to you this way. Maybe this will make sense to you. Maybe this will be absolutely foreign and alien to you. <laughs> but I'm going to try to put it into words so you can understand this. And, I, you know, if you have experienced this, mm -hmm. I, 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 absolutely, I absolutely encourage you to go out into a part of your day and experience and practice this state. There is a state of being you can be mentally where you are not conscious and aware. 
there is something deeper and so much more fundamental to this state of consciousness where you can break free of it. And what I mean by that is this is all you have to do, but it takes deep contemplation. It takes deep contemplation and focus. When you go home tonight, um, find something in your room, maybe a poster or you look at your lamp or look at some kind of trinket on your bedside table, whatever it is that you might have in your house, you know, in your room, when you have that downtime, try this on for size. Look at something and realize that you are conscious of it, okay? Now you are aware that you are conscious of it, all right? You're consciously aware that you are aware of your consciousness, okay? There's that first part. Now it goes deeper. Now it goes down into the rabbit hole of reality of what it is to be on a quantum level, which is that you are consciously conscious of your awareness being aware of your consciousness being conscious. In other words, what I'm saying is, if you continue to look and realize this, you are consciously conscious of your consciousness being conscious, which means you are aware of your awareness being aware of your awareness. So who or what is the observer observing the observer's observations? No, I mean, I'm saying, I mean, I can understand what you're saying, but it, it all, it, you have nothing without awareness. Right. But you also have nothing without consciousness. No, you, no, you can have awareness with no consciousness, but you cannot have consciousness with no awareness. I agree and disagree at the same time. I think that <laughs> there is a I, I mean, I mean, I do. Like, I mean, I'm not putting you down by any means. I actually am an applaud of you because I love your mind. I love the way you think. You're open, and I love that. Let me, let me, let me, let me. Put you, there's a fish that lives in the ocean, and it spends half of its life trying to find a place to settle in the ocean. Once it finds a place where it can sit and feed off of its environment, it spits its brain out of its head. It no longer needs the brain. It is totally conscious without the mind. Well, not mind, but the brain. The mind is still there regardless. The mind and the brain are two separate things. The brain is a receiver of information. Reg you know, once you remove the brain from this creature, or once it removes its own brain from existence, or, or separates its brain from its body, it is still consciously able to feed on a survival mode of awareness, which means it is still conscious that it is aware that it needs to survive. I mean, but that's the awareness, though. That's it's, that's all awareness. Yeah, yeah. You have to. Yeah, I, I mean, it's 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 the yin and the yang, man. I mean, yeah, that's all it really is. It's the yin and the yang. <laughs> I mean, because you. I mean, because you have to be. You have to be aware for anything to exist. You know what I'm saying? There's no way for you to exist if there's no awareness of you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Now let me ask you. I mean, let's go a little deeper. What do you believe? What do you believe is the uh, after this question? After we, run, I'm gonna go into the into the uh, uh, what do you call? It? I, I guess the uh, the messages that people are sending to us. Um, uh, and we got two down there. But um, what do you believe is the limitations of mind? Uh, there is no limitations. Beautiful. Beautiful. I mean, you couldn't say it better. There, it's just, there isn't. You're <laughs> right. I mean, it's infinite. Dude, it's infinite. Um, 
and I, I'm I'm really glad to be able to actually have a conversation. Uh, you know that where somebody understands that everything is mine because some some people want to argue until they're blue in the face that the universe is not a conscious thing. It, it, it's, it's 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 like like it's a mechanism, not an organism. And the <laughs> and I'm like, how do you not see that it's the universe? Was, you know, it's because it, they you know people people you know naturally people do things in routines. You know what I'm saying? So when your mind mm-hmm. routine thinks of something or believes something for so long, somebody try to tell you something different. It's hard. It's hard to, to try to think that it is. Different. <laughs> it is, especially with how the experience. Yeah, it really, like, honestly, it comes down to the experience. If the experiencer is not ready for the experience, then the experience will not be had. The it's only until what we call mind, uh, until we uh, at least arrive at a a point of singularity in our lives where we're like, okay, I, you know, I'm ready for this experience. I am ready to have this understanding and where I, you know, where you once think I am individual from all things around me, from my environment, that everything outside of my skin is a threat to what's inside my skin. You go from that point to this point where you're like, oh, all things that are outside my skin is what's happening inside my skin. And my skin is only a bridge between that. But yeah, but you know, when, you know, a lot of people, a lot of people have, it's, it's their perception of God that keeps them from understanding. You know a lot of yeah, people's well, perception, I mean, yeah. a lot of people's perception of God puts them down to not understand who they really are. Well, yeah, yes. Um, what people have been taught to believe is that God is this omnipotent, infinite being. Now, now before I continue, I want to <laughs> take you know push the pause button and and and, and bring into the understanding that people say this omnipotent infinite being okay infinite infinite okay that's important that's why i'm capitalizing on it people have no actual understanding of what it what infinite means because infinite is not something you can you know put under a microscope and, and give it a unit of measurement Neither is God. Infinite, you infinite know, is something but, that's always there and always going to be there. You know what I'm saying? It's 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 the circle with it's the circle without circumference. Um. Oh, actually, let me let me, let me put it this way: it's the circle whose circumference is everywhere. It's the circle that is everywhere whose circumference is nowhere. I I I just want to make sure like I I want to I want to make sure I'm I'm saying that right. It is the circle that is everywhere whose circumference is nowhere. That is God. It is the thing of all things that is being in the things that it created to be in. It is indistinguishable. It's unfathomable. It's ununderstandable. It's not, it's not something that we can just say. Oh, the only way we can say this is God. Is to look at something as simple as a flame on a candle, or the light in our windshield, or 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 or, or the the leaves and the trees. Like I mean, everything that that is existing around us, or even within us, is God. And if we were able to understand that, then we start to get the point. I mean, like it's only through seeing divine. In the divine, or, or, or at least divine in all creation, is when we begin to actually understand that what is really happening. If we see the world or the environment around us as just a dead, soulless, godless thing, then we're missing it all. And we become 
we become uh, these automatons on autopilot, which is what we are programmed to be through I the mean, system of government that that we're under. Like, because, I mean, it's just what you say. It's just what you say, man. Everybody, you gotta. It's it's basically you was taught to de- you was taught to detach yourself from God and to worship Him. You feel and worship it. You feel what I'm saying? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We were taught it, 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 to worship. But if you was taught that, if you was, if you was actually taught that you are at, that you know what I'm saying, you are basically God in a body. You know what I'm saying? We are not God. You, I'm not saying in, you. And in, in, in the kingly sense, not in the kingly sense, not in the sense that we are the all. Like, no, I'm not saying you could like. I'm not saying like. I'm not like talking about like cartoon type goddess. I'm saying like right, <laughs> right. You know, I, no, I'm following you. We, but we are one with the infinite. We yeah. are immortal. We are immortality. We are infinite, wrapped in yeah. skin. Yeah. Period. Yeah. Exactly, because we. I was trying to explain this to my sister, man, because I told her exactly what you just said. I told her I was an infinite being. And she told me how. Mm-hmm. And I told her, and she was like, you're going to die. I say, when I die, where do I go? She was like, to heaven or hell. I was like, so am I really dead or am I just going somewhere? <laughs> yeah, see, like, those are the wrong questions. The questions that need to be asked are at <laughs> no, least... But she, no, if but I like, I guess say something saying. else, she wouldn't have understood me. If I had to, like, simple it down before, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> so they say, like you know, when 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 people ask, like I've been asked those kinds of questions over and over again, and it's like they're like, "Well, you know, you're gonna die, right?" And I'm like, "Dude, my body belongs to the earth. My body belongs to this nature in this third dimensional reality. Yeah. It's meaningless. My, this this being this, this this body is meaningless." To what I actually am, but that's the, the understanding of thinking that you are the body and, and not the one who possesses the body. Right. What we are within, you know, as as the kudalini, you know, as, as the as the <laughs> the chakras, you know, from the from the root to the crown chakra, that is our alignment of light back to source energy. And that is what returns back to source energy when the body dies. But the body returns to this third dimensional reality that we came from. And there's no other. Saying. Yeah. You know, and I that, mean, that we came from. Here to have God, the one, God is the one with the source. God is the one who put the source in it. You know what I'm saying? And God is exactly. the one that the source is going to go back to. Right. And the only thing that's infinite is what is infinite. Because there's only unity in unity. So when when we die, imagine how many people, like I mean, not people in physical form, of course, but I imagine yeah. how many people that you know that that pass on and their spirits are like, man, was I taught the wrong thing? Man, do you think, did I, like, do you, I didn't, do you I think they come, come back and try again? again? Well, I mean, I think some people had to. I mean, I think that's where a lot of our descendant masters came from. They were like, I need to go down there and teach these these people, like, you know, what they're all about. Like, you know, even Jesus himself in the Bible taught. He said in one of the scriptures, God is in me as I am in God, and God and I are in you. That is the whole fucking story. I mean, like, uh, excuse my friends, right? But it, I mean, that is a trinity of trinities. That's it. That, but you that, know, do you read, have you read any other books besides the Bible? Yes, I've read the Hermetica, the Emerald Tablets, I've read the Baba Gita, I've read the, I, I, dude, I, I've read a lot. I mean, like, I'm always in constant study. Um, oh, and cool. I find there's a lot of truths in it. Yeah, it's a and lot of all. truths in all the books, but you know, the once you they take the truth and the most of the books they take the truth and then they hit you with the truth and then they hit you with all the other shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I mean the one, the one, the one thing 
<laughs> it's actually kind of comical. And the one thing that like, <laughs> I've heard a point of over and over again is nobody wants to go to heaven. <laughs> I mean, that's I mean, that sounds funny. But like, honestly, when you get down to it, nobody wants to go to church. But that's what heaven is. Heaven is a constant state of it's, it's a twenty four seven, never, never nighttime, never daytime. It's, it's it's this continuous, consistent state of of equilibrium, where everything is just perfectly in balance. But all you're demanded of in heaven is to worship the Almighty, and every day is full of nothing but. Worship, 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 worship. Yeah, but where, where, did, where did you get the description of heaven from? Well, I mean, I've heard it from a lot of different like sort, but I, I'm I'm simply speaking on Western culture type thinking oh, between yeah, yeah. the between the Catholics, between the Protestants, between the Nazarenes and and Baptists, and I mean, they all have this idea that we're all going to go to heaven and be in the in the presence of God, and we're all going to sing praises and. Uh, you know, into eternity of <laughs> our love for God. And it's like, so he created us to just nonstop worship him after death? Is that really what... Is, is that really what we are... I mean, come on. <laughs> That's what we're created for? For it to be nonstop worshiped? I mean, like, you might as well say that God's a narcissist. I mean, that's what I'm saying. That's That's the perception of God that people are taught. That's why they never... That's why a lot of people never get it because their perception of God. Yeah. So <laughs> my perception of God is that God uses itself over and over again to learn what it is. I believe that God is an innocence like a child. I believe that God is uh, has created something maybe that seems to be not alien, but we feel in some kind of way that it is alien to us on on a deeper you know intrinsic level where like it became the opposite of itself so that it could lose itself within what it created to become something that was not itself so that one day it could remember what it is to be itself and reunite with itself it's a game of hide and seek lost and found and now you see it and now you don't kind of game here in reality and and, and to me that seems to be the the deepest most fundamental truth when it comes to what 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 we really are in this in this grand vastness that we call the universe and now, we, we feel so small, and we've been programmed to think of ourselves to be so small. But I think that we really have been programmed and, programmed and conditioned to believe that this is what we are. We're, we're this little tiny thing on this little tiny piece of dust in the grand infinite universe. But the fact is, consciously, we are evolving to this understanding of oneness and unity with what we call source creator. It wants to remember what it is to be itself so that it can learn to be it, it, it's this the series of the series of unfortunality that you know that where like unfortunate things happening killings and you know, war and rape and and assaults and and like you know this violence that we have towards each other and a lot of this violence comes from the 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 perspectives that we have on our beliefs it's like That's you don't believe what i believe you all you don't believe what i believe now we gotta fight each other and kill each other over what we believe well, yeah, I mean, that's what I'm saying. But that's that's what I'm saying, man. You gotta. <clears throat> it's the belief, you know. Beliefs, beliefs, man. It's not. You know, a belief is basically. A belief is not something that you really experienced. You know what I'm saying? Because if you experienced it, you would have no belief in it. You would know. You know what I'm saying? So a belief is just basically something that you that you. Either fear is something you have no real recognition of. You know what I'm saying? The one thing I agree with you on there 
I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm sure there's plenty of circumstances out there with people that are a hundred percent, you are where you're a hundred percent accurate with that statement, but there are, I mean, I witnessed it for myself. There's also this, 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 uh, happening that happens that people believe what they believe, not because of an experience, but because they're afraid not to believe it because they're afraid. I if, if I don't, if I do not believe this, I will be condemned to eternal torment, and I have to believe this because well, I would rather. Oh, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Well, I mean that that's basically it, you know. Like you know, well, it, it, they're they're afraid that they don't they will suffer but, if they do believe in it. They will, you know, have paradise for eternity, and uh, and, and, but, and like this. So they're kind of manipulated. They're kind of influenced and conditioned into believing this out of fear rather than believing it out of faith. But they have to understand that everything you believe comes from your mind. You know what I'm saying? Every belief you have comes from your mind. It's nothing that has well, to do with the with the present. It's, it's something that has to either do with the future or the past. You know what I'm saying? Your belief is yes. based off what's going to happen in the future or the past. Right, which is where ego and spirituality come into play. You got to know which one to feed. Every emotion that you have is an animal. And whichever animal you feed emotionally is the one that thrives the most. So we need to learn how to feed the the thing that we call ego and the one that we call spiritual unity. And, and because, I mean, let's face the facts. We were born with a very quiet spirit and a very loud ego. So our ego says, I must believe this because... I mean, look look at where we are as a human race. That's it what I'm saying. It look, every religion it, kills every every religion kills your ego. Yes. Well, I mean, every religion, every religion is a manifestation of ego. No, every, every religion, religion kills your ego. Every religion tells you you are nothing but a a, a servant or a slave or yes. you know it, it kills your ego you know what i'm saying yeah. it kills well i mean you know it, it, but it's, it's it, but at the same time it's representing the very thing that we are that is exactly what ego is i mean i'm not saying ego in the in the psychological you know psychological sense i'm saying Ego in the sense that we are the yin and the yang. We are spirits, which is the very soft, very softly spoken intuition deep inside of us. And we're like, you know, like it's, it's that moment where you go to steal a pair of sunglasses, for example, and you're like, I really shouldn't do this. Well, that's spirit. Ego is the part of you that says, yeah, but they look really good on you if you if you take them, and all the ladies would dig you if you do. That's the devil and Jesus. I mean, everything that we've <laughs> ever been programmed to believe is wrapped up into what is inside of us, and That's people think that people think this is something exterior from us. This is not exterior from us. This is internal. Spiritual warfare it is between your physical being and its need to be appreciated, recognized, to have material things. And the more material things that you possess, the more you feel satisfied. And there's a reason why people like Tom Brady at the top of his game, at the peak of his success, says in an interview, I might be the most successful quarterback in history, but I am not satisfied and I don't know why. It's because you have not focused on your spiritual condition. You have not discovered I mean, I mean, what you are. Existence just playing football. He don't know nothing else. <laughs> I mean, you can be, <laughs> you can be, you can be grand and the greatest quarterback in the world. I mean, this, 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 this is what I'm trying to say. You can be the great, the greatest quarterback in the world, but yet never fulfilled because you don't know who you are or what you are. And when you know what you are, 
regardless of the amount of success or the lack of success, you find peace in that because you know that fuck what they tell me I need to be or not to be. I'm an eternal being and I'm here for a reason. I'm here for the experience as an eternal being. I'm having an experience that like, you know, where I can evolve and, and, and learn and football. I mean, that's one of a trillion (laughs) examples. I mean, but still it's that experience. Why are the wealthiest unsatisfied? Why are the poorest satisfied? I mean, that's not always true, though. I know some... No, no, not in every case, no. Not in every case. But, I mean, like, you know, I mean, compared to people who get paid billions of dollars, millions of dollars, um, you know, that that uh, simple people like... Uh, I mean, I, I've actually listened to a couple of um, uh, Christian... They're they're not they're not Christ like the Christian Christians. They are uh, mystic Christians. They are uh, in the root of esoteric Christianity, if you will. Um, and what they are doing in their circle, they make no money off of what they do because nobody believes them. They're here in a here in a country where nobody believes anything that they're saying. Because it goes against the fundamental value of what the Bible teaches. And if they go, if it goes against the Bible, then they are a weapon of the devil. And this is the biggest lie that we, that, that, has, that has been programmed into Western culture thinking. That, that if you are this way, it's the devil. If you are that way, it is of God. And if you stray off of the path, you are in danger of eternal consequences because you are a divine loving child of God, but you are still on probation. He loves you very, very much, but hey, that's what I'm saying, is... man. The perception, the, that's the whole thing. They try to make you think they, they put this image of what God is on you. You know what I'm saying? And then they make yeah. you try to fear it and love it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um at this time just really quick, I see that we got some messages. I'm just going to go ahead and go through them really quick. Um, are you okay with that? Yeah, go ahead. Awesome, awesome. All right. We got BX Blues. So then what's the final conclusion of all the being one into one and the one into one into one into one? What What's the final <laughs> conclusion? What is the uh, the greatest hope of all? The transcendent meaning that makes all meanings of meanings. Uh, what's in, well, in other words, what's in it for me? Mm. That's good. That's good. I'm gonna, I'm, I, uh, BX Blues, uh, I'm going to get back to you on that. Actually, I have an answer for you. Um, but I'm going to keep, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to continue and kind of blow through these real quick and I'm going to come back to that. I promise because I have a great answer and I want to cap on that. Another one from BX Blues. Life is not, and the meaning of life, okay, and the truth is not esoteric. Because we are not esoteric and convoluted humans, okay? We operate on the order of logic, intelligence, communication, language. All of that is needed to be in order and categorized and simplified Okay, in order for everyone to understand. So the same thing goes with the truth. The truth cannot be esoteric or mysterious or hidden. Okay. So really quick. Oh, he's not here. Darn. Okay. Um, but in case he comes back to listen to this, uh, BX Blues, the meaning of meanings the understandings of understandings, the mystery of mysteries. This is something we cannot possess in its in entire entirety. We cannot say, I get this. As a human being, we can't. It's impossible. 
What we can say is, if you imply that there is purpose, you're also imp Oh, man, you got muted. Yeah, I don't think he muted it. I don't think he know he muted himself. He ain't saying nothing. That uh, we call. Um, <laughs> hey, yeah, you was on mute the whole time, man. Oh, really? Yeah, man. I was. Yeah, I tried to call your name, but I don't think you heard me. No, oh, shoot, I... shoot, shoot. <laughs> um, okay, all right. Well, what what I was I don't know what happened, but like what I was saying is, um, uh, to, to to say that we have meaning to meanings and the purposes to um uh the purposes to purposes and 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 all of that is to say that um it, it, for example like i said earlier if you say that there is a purpose to it all then you have to imply that there is non-purpose to it all as well because one does not work without the other you cannot have yin without yang you I have to realize that if you imply that only one thing is correct, then the opposite is also correct because they're both brothers. You cannot have north without south. With only north, we wouldn't exist as a human race because you have to have south to keep the balance. Just, like, I, just, as you, just as you need to have spirits with ego, they are the yin and the yang. I, don't, I mean, I would, I mean. I mean, it's tough. I mean, like, breaking out of duality is tough. But, I mean, like, when you imply that one thing is true, you're also implying that the same thing is false. Oh. I mean, that, that, I mean, that truly, in reality, we're, we are not taught this. But that is the way that it works. And it's, it's a tough kind of circumstance to come into a realization of. It, it, it's just like the Pinocchio paradox. Have you ever heard of the Pinocchio paradox? Have I heard of the Pinocchio paradox? Yeah. Oh. <clears throat> okay. Um, the Pino uh, just really, really quick before I move on to more messages. The Pinocchio paradox um, goes j goes as such: if if you were if you were Pinocchio, or or uh, he, it doesn't have to be you, but I mean, let, let let's go with this way of saying it: if Pinocchio were to say, "My nose will grow now." Now, knowing Pinocchio, that you know, in in the story of Pinocchio, I mean, it, it's just as just as anything else in reality. It has to be truth or lie, because everything you state, according to what we conceptualize as human beings, is either truth or lie. So that means that when Pinocchio states, "My nose will grow now," that means that it's either truth or lie. But when he says that my nose will grow now, that means that if it grows, that means he was lying about it growing. But it can't grow because he said it was going to grow, but it I can't mean, grow unless it was a lie. Yeah. <clears throat> so, but if it, it will probably grow if he didn't lie previous to saying that. But... Okay, so if he said it will grow now, I mean, the only condition in which the nose can grow is if it was a lie. Yeah. So if he said my nose will grow now, there has to be a lie involved, which means he was telling the truth about it growing, but it cannot grow unless the, there was a statement of lie. Yeah. So it can't. So it can't grow, but it has to grow at the same time. No, it's, it's gonna grow because he lied. <clears throat> but it was the truth at the same time. It was the, at the same time. It was true. So I mean, because 
Because at the same time it's truth, it's false. At the same time it's false, it's true. The only way to break out of this 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 uh, uh, confliction of, of uh, duality of whether it's true or false is to realize that what we claim to be true and false is subjective. That neither one of them actually exists because what we created as true and false is conceptual. They're concepts. We chose, we did, as human beings, we did, we chose what is true and what is false. And if we can accept that we have been the biggest in hindrance of our evolution consciously, then we can move forward. Until then, until we can take responsibility for what we've done to ourselves, we're, we're going to remain stagnant. All right, let's listen to the, uh, the next message. All right. That is what it is. Oh, my goodness, child. You better tell them God has been highly misrepresented down here, child. Oh, they don't know God because they don't know themselves. Oh, Lord. <laughs> he hit them with so many troops. Shout out to y'all. Shout out to y'all on the panel for having this discussion. I would love to come up and conversate with you guys about this. Shout out to the people in the audience and the participants. I love all you guys. I hope your day is just as magical as you are. And um, let's keep this shit going. <laughs> I like you already. <laughs> I really do. I love your energy. <laughs> I'm following you. It really comes down to how aware are you of you, period. Because, you know, we love to go throughout life and say, oh, is this person? Oh, is that person? But until you look at that person in the mirror and you say that maybe there is something that I can change within myself to adjust around the situations. Because in life, nothing's going to change until you fucking change. Period. That's just what it is. If you if you wait around for change, it will never happen. You'll be waiting forever. Forever. Yep. The change has to take place within you for it to manifest on the outside of you. Because really all it is, this life is, even with interactions with people, is sp telling us more and showing us more about ourselves. And so everybody we meet, we're learning more about ourselves or we're getting something out of us that we needed, that we lost before previously. We're, we're just growing and expanding in the awareness of who we are. And, yep. and through that, you learn who God is. Next one. Same person. What well, Flipper's trying to say, and I totally understand, is God is the source and, you know, where we come from. Which God, let me tell you, God is love. God is love and God is truth. Yeah. Even when truth hurts, truth hurts, you, you have to grow, go through those growing pages in order to grow. You have to go through growing pains. That's just what it is. And so when he says that, you know, we are God, not in an essence that we are almighty, but we come from a part of God where we have fragments of God within us. So we are a God of our own life, you know, and the choices that we make, you know, whether we choose to live with integrity or not, whether we choose to live with morals and ethics or not, these are choices that we make. And as individual people, we all make them. So the choice of freedom of will, the fact that we have freedom of will, we are a God of our life. You know, we can't control nobody else's life. We don't really know all there is to know. We're still fucking remembering. We're not learning, we're remembering. You know, you see what I'm saying? Like, uh, this whole dimension is crazy. It is crazy. You're right. I got one more. I I'm loving I'm loving the feedback here. I really am. I'm loving the feedback. I got one more from Artemis again. It's going to play the last one. Uh, this is just a comment on um, knowing versus believing and knowing based on your experience. I was just wondering if you think there are different levels of experience, things that you can experience. Um, like if you experience really subtle things, isn't there a tendency or isn't there an, a possibility that you're going to maybe believe something concrete out of obscurity, for lack of a better word? In other words, can you really always know based on your experience or is even that left up to interpretation? Thanks. Okay. I mean, I, I, awesome. I, 
I, on that one, I believe that your your experience is based off how good you learn. You know what I'm saying? If all your experience through life, like you never went through anything really major, that means you learn very quick. You know what I'm saying? Most of the time when something major happens, it's not the first time or, you know what I'm saying? It's something that so we never learned and we just kept doing it. <laughs> And it became major. Well, I mean, it, it, it's only like, well, yeah, I agree with you. I mean, it's only through the the process of unlearning what we've learned. Like, you know, it, it's like, it's just like what we do in our personal life. Like, well, shit, this didn't work. 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 Like, what the hell actually <laughs> works? You know, <laughs> you know, and we get to that point in our lives where we like we want to throw like ourselves on the floor, and we're like, I, 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 I can't just continue to um, be this person anymore, and, and it's only until we reach that precipice that we need to change as an individual, and sometimes. Just, I mean, just as myself, like this, this happened as an experience with myself. This feeling of what the change in myself individually became the recognition that I am not an individual. That is a powerful transformation in your perspective. Um, when you realize that you are not the body. When you are not the mind, when you are not this thing that, that you have been identified as, you become something so much more powerful because you're no longer contained and controllable. When you conquer the fear of death, when you conquer the fear of death, you conquer everything in life. Because I mean, the fear of death, death, you said the fear of death. The, the, yes, when people conquer the fear of death, because death implies life, as life implies death. It is life is the interval between two darknesses, and death is the interval between two lives. Period. I mean, nothing, and ever, really. nothing ever dies. Nothing ever dies. Even your body. Exactly. Your body, that's all I'm your saying. body came so, from Earth. It won't die. It will you, it's right. go back to Earth. That's why you're supposed to bury it. You know what I'm saying? So it'll go right. back to where it came from. Right. And what you is consciously. <laughs> right. And what is consciously observing the experience of the physical body that returns to Earth moves on into another higher realm of understanding. Uh, or I mean, or or vibration or frequency, whatever whatever term or category you want to put on it. But the fact is, wh whatever conceptual like thing that in which we return to spiritually, yes, you're right. The body does return back to where it came from, which is the earth. But there is something, there is something there within us that is eternal. That that, that is. I mean, As I you, said you earlier, are not the body. I'm not. I'm not talking about you. I'm just talking about your body. <laughs> right. Like you know, there, there there's an observer observing the observer's observations. There's an experiencer experiencing the experiencers experiences. There is a consciousness conscious of the consciousness being conscious, and when <laughs> and when. <laughs> <laughs> and when you like come into this place of like oh my god like that's what i am when you see that the stars in the universe when you see this was my experience personally when you see that you that you are the universe experiencing itself through a physical form which is you in multiple forms what it is to not be itself, you recognize, oh my God, like, this is familiar. This is something not, not bigger than me, but bigger than my identification with what I have been identified as. And there is something else so much bigger 
than 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 the body, but I but what I am is everything. I am everything because everything is entangled, and I am the entanglement. I am the process of the universe, not not the the not the uh, the product of the universe, but I am the continuous process of the universe, and it's that state. Man, does that set you free? It sets you free so in so many ways. It changes your life. Yeah. Death does not exist. Death is a human construct. Death says, you know, especially through religion. Religion is is the pinnacle of all perpetual anxieties when it comes to death. They they even <laughs> go through a whole ritual with it they bring people in in black and they put the person that died in black in a box and they say <laughs> oh well he's i know this person and they propose to put him in a box you just told them like put him in the ground so they could go back you know what i'm saying into the ground they do it they do it in such a distortion way that it's like oh my god i mean i mean I, when I was a kid, it, yeah, it was sad. When I didn't know what I know now, but as an adult, as as you know, like coming into my forties, I see what's really going on, and and what's really going on is this this sense of you need to fear this moment, this moment right here. Look down upon this person lying in the casket. Look I down mean, upon you. them. And fear your mortality. You know, drop to your knees and accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Like, I'm like, you guys you are not getting why, it. Right? I mean, you got to understand the whole reason religion was created, man. Religion was created to control the masses. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It was, a, it was, well, it was yeah. something for everybody to believe in and everybody to follow so they would be easily controlled. You know well, sure, so, because it gives people. That's, that's what on. I'm saying. So, it's that it's going. It's only going to give you so much truth, because mm -hmm. if it does, you will then be uncontrollable. Right. It keeps people in the flow, or people following the crowd, following the crowd. Yeah. You know, and 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 at the very most manipulate until there's no resistance at all but the 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 whole foundation of self discovery is resistance it is it just is one of my favorite quotes is god's first act of abandonment was self I'm sorry. So one of one of God's. I'm, I'm, I might have said it wrong. I'm sorry. I'm gonna restart. One of God's first act of uh, of love was self abandonment. Our first ability to connect with what we are is through the same act of abandonment, and that is so true on so many levels. We need to abandon what we consider to be. The self, because what we consider to be the self is what we were identified as children. Hey, we came the world I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say you have to abandon it. I would I would say you have to because it's not something that was originally there. It was something that was put in you or something that was, was you know what I'm saying? Well it it, it was what it was it was uh it was a uh, a conditioning. This is what you are. This is who you are. You have a social security number. This body, this flesh and this skin has a social security number. It also it also has a name, which on every piece of doctrine that you have is um in capital letters. Um which means that you don't which means that it belongs to them, not to you. I mean, like, these are things that are important to know. Like, you know, what you possess, you do not own. 
what you what you think you own is I mean but you know in all actuality if you if if you understand it then you own it. You know what I'm saying? Because well, I, I, mean, I myself you just, I understand I understand everything you're saying, but I, I, I still have a uh, I still have a a social security number and all that type of stuff, but I never Well yeah, it. but that's that's not you though. That's all <laughs> I'm trying to say. It's not you. I mean you have it. But it's not you. It's not what you are truly are. It's not who you are. It's what you are. That that truly defines at the end of your life the purpose. And and by purpose, I mean like that's a word I don't I don't like to use that much because to say that there is purpose is also to say that there's non-purpose. But at the end of your life, you need to realize. The difference between who you've been told you are and the difference in what you are. And what you are is far more fundamental than who you are. And what you've been led to believe and manipulated and to believe in through through uh, programming and, and, and through uh, you know all, all the different systems of the world and you know conditioning is what you have been identified as, but never recognized for what it is that you actually are. I mean, it all starts, I mean, but, you know, it's going to be, if in order for people to understand that, man, you got to start with the kids, man. Because it's, it's easier start... to just, it's harder to try to deprogram somebody than to just keep somebody how they is. You know what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> you know, you know, you're right. You're right. I mean, you know, one of the uh, I'm going to get to the messages here in just a second here because I mean I'm sure there's this is a really deep conversation into the into our conditioning into the very conditioning as you know into what it is to be a human being and that's really really important. Um, we don't really hear a lot of people out there talking about this, my friend. We don't. Not I mean, a lot of people don't know. This. They don't. They they don't want to see. He, he, <laughs> here's where it get. You know, here's where the rubber hits the road. Period. I don't care who you are. I don't care what body you're in. The problem that we have, not just in this country but in the world, is that people don't want to take responsibility. They want to blame something else, like the devil. For their problems, it's the mind, I did this man. because I did. I did this because the devil made me. No, you but did it because you. Mind. Mind. It is. People it is all in their mind. People don't know it's how to distinguish. Ego. People don't. A lot they of people follow. don't know how to distinguish what's 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 them and what's their mind. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Because your mind would tell you things, and you yourself would tell you things, and they sound exactly the same because they both come from you. Right. Right. So a lot of people don't know how to distinguish it. As long, but that's the thing. The problem that the, that the people have the problem with is that they don't know how to distinguish what's them and not them. But the but the thing is, it's always them. It's always them. <laughs> it, it's an it's an intrinsic eternal battle. It doesn't come from something exterior from you. There is no malevolent force of legions of demons and, and and legions of hell coming up here to the physical realm invisible to the naked eye to play on your mind and make you make the decisions that you make that's just a way of passing on your responsibility of what you do in reality and and, and this is like oh well i didn't mean to do that the devil made me do no no, that's what you chose to do because what you call the devil is ego, and what yeah, that's all ego, in your mind, man. That's all. That's it all is. What the ego is, what the ego is, the like the ego is the devil. What are demons? Demons. The ego, the ego is not the devil. The ego is it what is. you have been taught to be the devil. The ego is not well, the devil. It, it, yes, I agree with you. It, 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 it is, it is the ego, 
But what your ego is is always going to be different from person to person because of what you have been conditioned to believe. So every devil, every ego, every devil is different to each individual. But what here's the here's the singularity, my friend, is that if the devil is the ego, then everything that plays off of the devil that feeds the devil is your trauma in life. Your traumas are demons. Everything no, the whole, that's why that's why people mentals is so messed up is because they believe they believe what you're saying. They believe that their ego is the devil. So you so when whatever goes against their ego, they try to fight it or they say it ain't good or you feel what I'm saying? That ain't that's not that's not what it is. Or ego, you you're taught that to limit you, to keep you from elevating. You know what I'm saying? If if you know somebody who got the biggest ego in the world, you can't tell them nothing they can't do. And they always doing some shit. You know what I'm saying? Somebody who got a low ego. They always say they can't do nothing, and they always ain't doing shit. <laughs> but no, but no, you're right. But I mean, but nobody doesn't have ego. Ego isn't something that you can transcend. As long as you have a body, you have an ego. That is just the reality of what we live in. This is a reality in which you cannot get rid of your ego. You cannot be the body, but you can still have the ego because the ego is something you cannot get rid of. I mean, it's your ego, you need your ego. Man. Your ego is a very Im- important tool in life, man. It is. That's why, it is. That's, why it's, 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 that's why you've been taught not to use it, because if you use it, you'll be a powerful being. Man. You just got to use right. it. Your ego can be your friend. Up, it man? can be, because it points out, if, if you are aware enough, your ego points out the places in your life you need to heal from when it comes to your traumas. Your traumas are your demons. If your ego feeds your traumas, then they become your demons because that is what strengthens your ego. But if you are aware that, oh, well, so the devil is my ego, my my, my demons are my traumas, and if I bring recognition and awareness to this, I can heal myself. And that is, I, I, can, I can tell you, just out of experience, that is a real thing you can do. As long as you are honest with yourself as to what it is that is going on in your life. Why am I suffering from this? Why does this bother me? Why am I feeling guilt from this situation or resistance from that situation? If you recognize those things happening and you're like, whoa, this is ego trying to play the victim role in life. And I'm higher than that. I'm better than that. And you can not only begin to bring those traumas into the light and, and recognize that, oh, okay, I have these problems I have not resolved because ego has been covering them up like a like, – like a, <laughs> you know, like um, – I, I guess I'm I mean, trying your to traumas, get your traumas in your life, man. All that I mean, your traumas in your life just comes from your experience. Your whatever you experience yeah. creates the trauma. Exactly. It, it, yeah, exactly. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, like the things that happen to you since birth. I mean, if if you really dig to the core uh, of of what it is to be with your trauma, being born in the world itself in itself is a trauma and everything that has ever happened to you everything that that you and everybody else has ever been programmed to believe that everybody else has ever been conditioned to believe that this is the only truth that no, this you gotta, is the you gotta, only way. You gotta... The only you gotta you gotta let that you gotta let you gotta learn how to let stuff go, man. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, exactly. I can get into it, but I talk about it all day. You just gotta look up the the law of attachment. You know what I'm saying? The whole yeah. reason of, the whole reason of traumas is because you're attached to an incident that happened. You know what I'm exactly. saying? Exactly. And it's exactly. just replaying, and you just keep thinking about it. It's replaying in your mind. You gotta let that shit go, or you just gonna constantly be right. in trauma. You know what I'm saying? Right, exactly. Yeah. So every significant thing that happened in your life that becomes a trauma. Um, 
Oh, let's, we forgot to listen to Becomes the your demons. But, um, <laughs> yeah, I'm going to go ahead, though, and I'm going to play these messages, though. Uh, Real quick, I, I have about uh, I have a, I have a few minutes. Um, I'm probably gonna uh, let me see. It's uh, it's one forty eight where I am. I'm probably gonna stop around two thirty. So I got about I got about uh, forty minutes left. Um, I, I just I, I want to try to fit as much information into this podcast as I can while I have the time. Um, oh, yeah, that's cool. I'm a, uh, you, if you get off and I'm still on, I'm a. Uh... Let Kingdom Within hop in and see what she, she want to say. Yeah, I keep, yeah, the Kingdom Within, I mean, like, I love her energy. I would love to talk to her sometime, uh, the Kingdom Within, because that's what I believe. We are the Kingdom Within, before I start this, before I start this question. <laughs> that's what we are. We are the temple of God. What is a temple? It, it is a thing you go into to be in the presence of something higher than yourself. I mean, that tells it's, you it's who a, you are right there. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. It's a temple of God. Where are you? Exactly. You are if we are the temple you know of God, <laughs> then we are continuously without lag in the presence of God. That means that we are one with source mind, with source creation, with source self. Regardless of what we go through, we suffer traumas because of our our ignorance to 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 our connection. But you know, if the world understood our our connection to Source, we would not have these lives. We would not have this happening in in, in our day to day lives because we would just we would feel it. We would feel it. Through our I mean, entire being, it's just the mind, man. You got to people got to understand what their mind is and understand how it works and understand how to control it. So therefore, they'll be able to decipher what's their mind and what isn't. You know what I'm saying? What's part? Well, of I, I mean, are, are you are you familiar with are you familiar with the hemispheres, the left and the right? Before I, before I start playing these messages, are you familiar with the hemispheres in the brain? You either are right hemisphere or left hemisphere, and this really plays a part. On on what you construct and build as your I understanding mean, of reality. I mean, I mean, I mean, based on, I mean, I mean, I don't know. I I, I think I'm both. You feel what I'm saying? Well, I mean, I will think that I'm both too, but I'm pretty sure I'm both. When you go into the science, the th- I just want to point this out to you real quick, my friend. When you go into the science mm-hmm. of of left and right hemispheres of the brain mm-hmm. they both see reality in two different ways you can be both um but it's harder to stay in that consistent flux of I mean, being it's, it's, it's only hard if you believe if if it's only it, it it's only hard if you have a closed mind if you have a closed mind you will be set on one side true but if you were absolutely operating as one unified mind instead of two separate halves, you would be saying we instead of I. You would be saying us instead of me because you would see everything as a unification of of us as a collective consciousness rather than you being an individual. And, and nobody's talking like this because, well, I mean, I'm not saying nobody. I'm sure there's a lot of people out there that that I mean, do a lot this. Of people, I mean, you get you get taught to divide. You get taught right. to divide yourself from birth. From birth, right? When you was born, your mama said you are whatever your name is. You are Jacob. So now you already divided yourself from everybody because you ain't everybody. You just Jacob. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right. Yeah. So now you got to figure out what is Jacob. Now your whole life you're trying to figure out what is Jacob. You know what I'm saying? Like it's it's crazy. <laughs> yeah, it, it is. It is. You know, and, and then you come to you grow up, and then you and then you know, for for some people, you feel that like you are not this person. This person you identify as Jacob. Jacob is this thing. Jacob is this thing, and you're like, what is this thing that I'm calling me? <laughs> That, yeah. But over here, I feel you got that people, you got people who look up their name, this and that. So that is who I am. I'm like, what? Did you hear me? <laughs> got a phone call. I don't know. I got cut off. No, you no, you're all right. Yeah, I, I I did catch a little bit of it. I'm gonna go ahead though, real quick though, while we're um, coming to a close here. 
um, or we're coming up on two o'clock. I'm going to go ahead and play the kingdom and uh, kind of blow through these uh, really, really. Um, I'm sorry about that. I didn't the uh, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and, and blow through these uh, messages. Uh, I really want to hear what people have to say. Yeah, go ahead. Well, you could. Uh, yeah, go ahead. I'm going to have to. Oh, I was gonna say I'm gonna let I'm gonna let Kingdom join, so you can play everybody else, and she can just say what she got to say when she joins. They try to oh, keep yeah, it sure, sure, you know definitely, saying? yeah. Please, that would be. Awesome. I have to undo, um, I have to disagree with you, Flip, on that because a lot of the lessons I learned in life, it was lessons, but they were experiences. How can I explain it? So I've learned a lot of things through seeing people go through things because I'm a life coach, seeing things experiencing things but also knowing things um ah i want to get the words but there's no english words for this okay i'm gonna try to explain as best as i can um so no you don't necessarily need to the the situations a person that learns lessons they could have oh my god i'm you wouldn't guess what age i am but the age that i am i know what i know the wisdom that i know and I know that I don't know something. I know don't know a damn thing at the same time because of the lessons I went through in life. They were harsh lessons. The pain is what made me grow. It wasn't... I think people that go through pain, they grow. Yeah. Yeah. I All mean, right, um, true, but every, everybody learn different. Some people learn from experience. Some people learn from watching. Some people learn from, you know what I'm saying? Everybody right. Well, I mean, the one thing I'll say about that real quick um, before I move on to the, her, her next message is everybody's experiences are divinely influenced. These are predetermined things that happen in everyone's life to mold and shape them into the people they need to become. Um, not what they want to become, but who they need to become. We never know. We never know as a human being in, you know, it, like what we want we only we never know actually let me reword that we never know what we need we only know what we want we know what we want and we want and we want and we want and we want but then when we get what we need regardless of what we want it's only then do we understand why we received what we did as what we need and that's so powerful. I mean, you got to recognize the windows of opportunity when the universe opens them up for you. If you if you're ungrateful for what you get as you, what it is that you need, then you miss the entire opportunity to evolve. And because now you now you're in the state of on gratitude you know you're not gratified you're, you're, you're not being you're, you're not satisfied you're, you know you're not you're not in a state of gratitude for what it is that you received and the universe is like oh well they missed that window now we gotta send something else and sometimes it's more severe than others and and so with, with more severity depending on the individual comes a state of um different fluxes of, of experiences and it's only through the different fluxes of experiences that we re- realize oh well, like well this is why i needed my awakening in a way that i got it because it took me th- those challenges and those trials and those those experiences to get me to where i am now but without those that i needed i didn't want them but i needed them and without those, I would not have awoken into the realization of what I am as a human being, not who I have been identifying myself as. So that is so important, you know, to to disconnect from that from that illusion. Yeah. Um, if that makes any sense. Let's go to the next one. Do you guys ever feel like you're talking about self-actualization? Um, I fucks with that heavy. Uh, all I want to do is grow and learn. <laughs> and do it in love. Um, do you ever feel like sometimes when you want to express yourself or um, when you go to do something, do you ever feel limited by your physical body? Like, Because, like, okay, so I'm a dancer. So when I dance, I dance with my eyes closed and I let my energy flow and my whole spirit flow. 
And sometimes I feel restricted by my body. Like I can feel the dance moves in my body from the music, but I can see it in my head. And the things that I see in my head restricts me because it's like, you know, I might feel like I want to fucking fly for like three seconds off the ground and then do a twist and, you know, fly some more. And I'm talking about actual flying. That's how I feel energy wise. <laughs> but my body can't fly. I can't fly the human body. I feel so limited. Like, how can I truly express myself when I'm so limited being in this dimension? I mean, you're not you're not limited. It could definitely be done. You just can't do it with your physical body. You will need a little bit of help, like some strings or something. <laughs> Well, no, I mean, you're right. I mean, it's not impossible. It just feels impossible. And I'm, I'm going to capitalize that on, too, because there's layers to this. There's layers like it, like there is to an onion. You, it's not feel, impossible. you feel what you are fundamentally. You know, the, this this need to fly, this need to be free. But this this need to fly and this need to be free comes from spirit, which neither is constricted by body nor of time and space itself. So what do you understand as the body? Um, this need to be to, this need to fly and to be free is so much bigger than what you can possibly even imagine as a third dimensional being. What you feel is boundlessness. Unlimited, unlimited boundlessness, and that's incomprehensible to our our state of being, our our understanding as a human being, because we are so used to being bounded. But your spirit is not. Your spirit is neutral. Spirit is able to be everywhere at every time, just like quantum entanglement. It's everywhere but nowhere at the same time. It's nowhere but everywhere at the same time. Nothing is as it seems. You do feel this impulsive uh, intuition to be free. We all do. People like us who are in tune all feel that same way. We want to, we're tired of the limitless, uh, I'm sorry, the, the limitations of this reality. We want to break free of it, but we can't because we're here for a purpose. I mean, you got to understand. I mean, you know, we have, we, I mean, you have, we naturally have limitations. You feel what I'm saying? Yes, we naturally, do, yeah. We, we can do everything. You feel what I'm saying? But that's yeah. just the laws of, of the dimension that we are in. We have to abide by the laws of where you at. The laws of where we at is we can't fly. So if you want to fly, you got to, you know, get you a you know find some way for you to fly <laughs> yeah. yeah but there's there is this one second I'm sorry there is this uh this calling this, this inner calling I'm and I'm sure that some of us here and maybe even listening there is this inner thing we have to obey to the laws of this third dimensional reality, this this we have to obey to it. Um, I mean, I mean, not, you and, have, and I mean, you have, to obey, you, have to, you have to obey the laws of the dimension to actually survive in it. Like you can't be like, oh, fuck the laws of the, the uh, fuck the laws, and then jump off a twenty story building. Like you know what I'm saying? Like you, know, you can't do that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So you got to respect the laws, but at the same time, you could still do things to, you know what I'm saying? You could do other things. You feel what I'm saying? But yeah. the laws is the, is the laws. You know what I'm saying? The laws of the of the dimension. I'm not saying the laws of the people. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, well, the laws of being in a physical body as a spirit is um, is what we're limited to. That's what we don't feel comfortable with is the limitations but what we are not limited to is the higher vibration understanding as to what we are within the physical body so that that, that is what we need to tune into that is the whole process of spirituality is to tune into the higher knowledge and wisdoms of the, of our um 
you know, of, of Mother Earth, you know, like I'm not trying to sound new age because I'm I'm very old age alchemy, but you know, to mm-hmm. tap into the wisdoms that are around us that are that 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 are that are all divine. Everything has spirit. Everything is alive and conscious. <laughs> but uh, if we see things just as things, then we will never connect with those things as a higher plane of existence. So. I'm gonna keep moving forward though, though in, in the uh, in the feed because I do have to go soon. But um, go ahead, go ahead. all right. Hey, sorry. So I just wanted to throw this in here. I've been hearing a lot of kind of um, you're more than your body or you're not your body. I would say that you know, just throwing it out there that it's if you're going for a more <laughs> holistic view, I understand kind of rejecting the idea of that we're just our bodies to be able to understand whole, wholeness. But I find that there's also a danger in kind of rejecting, or not rejecting, but like forgetting the body as an expression of the complete person. So just throwing that out there, I guess. Thanks. Well, yeah, thank no, you. you don't um, forget the body. You just understand that you are not the body. You know what I'm saying? It's like It's like a car. You don't... When you buy a car, you don't say, I am the car. You say, I have the car. Once the car is not useful anymore, you get a new one. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right. Well, I mean, like, let, let, let's use that principle, actually. That's a great example. When you buy a car, you, like you said, you are not the car. But you, being in the car, operate the car. So what you are is that you're not the car itself, but you have the control over where the car goes and you have the, the capability of deciding how the car reacts depending on how you want to react with the car. So when we, when we break down, you know, using a mechanism of technology to obey the, the circumstances in which we are in, you know, using the car in that circumstance, we are, we we are participating in one with the car because we need yeah. the car in order to get around, you know, accordingly. But we're never identified as the car because as soon as the car is finished using it, it's you know it, it's uh as a tool we're finished using it as a tool we we need it for, just as we are in the body as spirit. Then, then we move on to higher planes of understanding, you know, and that's one of the things that we have forgotten as a human race, uh, or that we've been brainwashing to misbelieving, is that we are, our bodies are the car in the same sense. Yeah, we we are. You are not the body. I mean, once you once you get to realizing that you are not the body, a lot of other stuff is just falling into place. You know what I'm saying? Exactly, exactly. I'm gonna keep going with the uh, messages real quick, man. I don't mean I don't mean to put a rush on it. I I really don't oh, want okay. everyone to. Yeah. <laughs> I love what Forbidden just said. This is so deep because oh my goodness, Ugh. I felt like as when I was younger, as a kid. I had to learn how to grow up real fast. And the older I get, now I'm having to live and be young, um, not take life so serious. But I also think it's so powerful with, you know, Forbidden said, it's Forbidden has said so many fucking gems and so many jewels, child. I just, uh, I want to chime in on all of them, but like, it's so fucking deep. <laughs> it's so deep. He's talking about being the observer. As I go through our life and I get older, I'm realizing that it's best to be the observer, to sit back and to observe and to not to respond, not to um, even ah, you can acknowledge it and observe it without dismissing it. If that makes sense. Ah. <laughs> All right. It's like a part right here. Forbidden, I have a question since you, you know, since you're of a higher um, <laughs> dimension. Um, I probably should ask people this question more often. The people that I actually know that's on the frequency able to grasp what I'm saying and actually understand and actually be able to communicate effectively. Um, what's your take? I want to ask your opinion. What's your take about. Um, oh, my goodness. The question I had. Hold on. I 
I can't remember it. I maybe I'll just still my mind a little bit. Um, it was such an important question. And it's like a question you just don't ask regular people. Um, <laughs> uh, you're so blessed to be unique. Oh my goodness. It, isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing how God made us individually who we are individually in our own right? And like authentically. Wow. I mean, on, on, I'm going to play the next part, but I'm uh, uh, the kingdom within. I, I understand what you're saying. And I, I, I mean, I'm blessed. Honestly, I'm blessed to to have people like you in in such a journey of seeking, um, because I uh, when we live our lives in a world in such a way that where a system has such dominance over our state of being it's hard to remain in the state of being we recognize that we are in um i i hope that the words that i'm using are making sense here because we we're, we're born here we see the world for what it is and we don't agree with the way that it functions and we're like what is it <laughs> how did i end up here like like why is a person like me that sees all the problems um, with the way things are going? And why do I, why do the people around me that I'm surrounded by seem to not see what I'm seeing? Like, you know, on, on a higher level, it's like, there's so much more to this than this. And it's it's a heartbreaking experience because it's like, you want to wake people up into that, realization and some people are in such dire need of that awakening but um it's like they don't want to leave what they're comfortable with so um with that being said i'm going to keep and continue there's obviously a lot more to be said from the kingdom within so i'm going to keep going forward child listen here ain't nobody scared to die i already done died on the table when i was 10. this is what i tell anybody about death <laughs> death is a beautiful thing um you shouldn't mourn during death as if you lost because you didn't lose anything death is nothing but a transition um from one dimension or from one state to another state that's all death is death is never something that's been um how do i explain it you shouldn't be scared to die, bro, because you don't know what the fuck's going to happen, bitch. You're going to transform. That's what's going to happen. You die to be reborn again. We'll never die. Not our souls. Our bodies will go right back to home, like forbidden said, to the earth. You know what I'm saying? Like, we get a whole body for free in this dimension. And all we do, you know, nature gives us everything. And all she asks us to do is protect her. And you see what she's done, what we've been doing to her? It's, it's disgusting. It's fucking filthy and yes i will speak up for gaia's side on her yeah yeah it's really the ideology yes oh my goodness he's talking about mourning that thing putting that death to the old self yes oh my goodness this is so deep uh my mind <laughs> loves this conversation <laughs> And so many things I want to say, and it's like, mm, where do I begin? Ah, I get so excited. I'm so passionate about these conversations because they're like so fucking groundbreaking. But yes, you have to get rid of the ideology that you associate yourself with because you are not any of the things that you associate with your. Once you once you destroy your reputation, then you can be free, bro. And it's so crazy because ah. Oh. <laughs> Forget everything that you once thought you were. These are all fucking programs. Dismantle all that shit. Get in solitude and let God show you who you are. Who God created you to be. That is that is the fucking key. I'm telling you guys. Isolation for two years has done... You don't have to be in isolation. Forbidden, okay? <laughs> yeah, you I'm sorry, go ahead. I said, yeah, you don't, you don't have to isolate yourself. You know what I'm saying? I mean, if you're easily distracted, then yeah, but you don't have to isolate yourself. I, I mean, like, it depends on the form of is uh, isolation that you participate in. Like, I mean, and there, there's so many ways to isolate yourself, but when you come down to this sense of 
when you come down to this sense of uh, uh, isolating yourself from what you have been identified by, I mean, like, when you recognize that, oh, my God, like, I am the universe experiencing what it is to be itself in a physical form with the mystery of what it is to not be itself, then there's a higher plane of existence of isolation there rather than being like, well, I'm not, I'm not Gothic. I'm not preppy. I'm not, I mean, rather than the, the, those are separating yourself from phases. We're talking about separ separating separation on a level of cosmic, cosmic separation where you become, uh, unified with all things that exist as the very foundation of existence itself because we that's what we all are we are a beautiful representation of creation itself what we do is what the universe does and what the universe does is what we do um i mean but you know i mean i understand what you're saying but you know i mean i'm just i guess i'm going off me personally i never needed any type of isolation and no nothing well, I mean, like, you're probably one of those very gifted people. I mean, like, there's a lot of people like you, my friend, coming out of the woodworks. You got you, 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 you the new generations are uh, that are coming up are sprouting, sprouting out of the ground and planting new seeds. And that's what the purpose of all this is. And like people like me who are almost in their 40s, <laughs> we're here to tell you, you're not alone. You have a, like, there's a reason why you think the way you think. There's a reason why you feel the way that you feel. And you need to protect that. You need to protect that with all your might and never let go of it. Just like Jesus said in the Bible. Um, I, I, I am not a Christian or, or, or of any religion at all. I am just, I just see truth in all religions. And by me saying that, I see truth in this one thing of the Bible. That you need to sow your seeds where they will be fertilized. Pick and choose when and where and how to open your mouth and to and to use words of wisdom. You don't want to sow your seeds on the rocks nor in the thorns. You yeah. people like you and I and other people just like we're we've been having conversations with here on this podcast, you need to sow your seeds in fertile soil because the wisdom of the the, the one that is wise keeps their till uh, their, their their tongue still and their lips closed. Because to anybody else who doesn't understand this, um is wasting their energy. Because this is never understood by those that are in the state of the of, of the dream world, and the dream world is the state of identification. This thing that they believe is them that they have been identified as, and that is not the real world. The real world, the real state of reality, is infinite singularity. There's nothing else to it. You got to detach from this identity to accomplish this unification with spirit and and then things flow effortlessly and that, and and that's maybe for you that's a gift i i've been in your shoes i've been there i i, I when i was a kid i didn't hear truth in anything and i didn't know why and i i as as, as i grew up i fluctuated mm -hmm. from from atheism to um being agnostic from agnostic to atheist again because like nothing made sense and then i, I mean, realized that's how i was i think i i think i didn't try almost every religion that's why i asked you did you read any of the other books yeah yeah i i did um but not but i i, did, I didn't commit to them until like i had the realization that what i was conscious of was me what was consciously conscious of me was the universe being conscious of my being, my state of being. And this consciously, this consciousness being conscious of my consciousness being conscious was the experience of the experiencer being uh, experienced by the, uh, by me being the experiencer. Like the, the, there was, there was, <laughs> It's it's man, 
it's so deep and and our words our english language has very little effect to explain the unexplainable just as we have little little words to distinguish the indistinguishable so we're here to not be what it is to be the very thing that doesn't want to be understood a light doesn't need to shine on itself a hammer doesn't need to bang itself <laughs> just as a fire doesn't need to burn itself but we are that very thing and and this is a teaching that has been lost to western civilization and and people like you the upcoming generations are starting to feel this fundamentally and it's a beautiful transition into into higher states of consciousness and vibration it's it's a it's a frequency that is demanding attention and i love hey, how, that how, uh, how old are you man i'm 36 about to turn 37 oh yeah i mean i'm i'm 33 man no well i mean like okay I mean, you sound <laughs> you sound like you're uh, probably twenty three, but no, I, I mean, mean, you know, I don't really I don't, honestly the re I don't really like uh, do the age thing. Like I look real young too. You know what I'm saying? Like, no, I, never so keep, I. I, so I don't do celebrate I mean... my birthday. I never really keep track of it. I actually had to count because I knew I was gonna tell you my birthday, so I had to like figure it out before I said something. <laughs> <laughs> see, but see, like people like you and me, like in our thirties, like. We live to just live. We be to just be. And, and I, I'll say this one last thing real quick before I move on with the messages. But it seems that people uh, it seems that it seems that people display um, youth and their appearance on their face when they are in harmony with not being associated with this concept of time. Um, my my girlfriend, uh, Angela, she is uh, about to turn 42, and um, she doesn't look like she's in her 40s at all. I'm, I'm, I'm a couple, of, I'm three and a half years away from 40. Uh, we're five years apart. But, um, she doesn't look like she's in her forties. I don't. I don't look like uh, everybody thinks I'm in my twenties. But like, yeah. you know, why? Because we we don't get people like us. We don't get caught up with 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 the hype, with with, with the distortion, and with the well. You know, you need to be wearing this. You need to look like this. You you know, we're not involved with pop culture and ads. <laughs> you know, we, we're we're open minded people. We are not stressing ourselves to up appear physically in a certain way where it demands all this attention our attention never needs to be demanded of that kind of energy so we are we can see people who are the same age as us and they look like they are in their they in their 50s and, um, and they're like they're like whoa you're 36 i'm like yeah and they're like they're like, man, when I was 36, I would have given my left nut to look as young as you. I was like, well, what were you doing in your life? <laughs> yeah, what did you do? <laughs> <laughs> like, what happened? <laughs> I mean, and people are like, oh, well, that's genetics. No, I mean, you got to uh, no. take care of your body, too, man. That's all you, it is. Yeah, you, you do. do. You, know you do. I mean, Zoom, it plays a part. Out, stuff like that. Yeah. It plays a part. But, I mean... Going to the gym and working out and stressing about how you look is just as equal as as what you are wearing as your physical image, as anything else. As, oh. as far as your pop culture fat system and your fashion sense and all that, like it all plays a huge part in in what you are and how you age. And, and 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 so I really think that the turmoil you put yourself through displays, and you wear it on your face, and that what you wear on your face displays as what we call age, not yeah. in numbers but in appearance. I wouldn't. I would say I would. I would basically say it's what you hold on to, man. Because honestly, man, I looked at older when I was younger. 
Yeah. Yeah, I, I was I was actually like ridiculed a lot when I was uh I, I got I got bullied a lot. Um and and I'm not gloating by any by any means, but um uh, uh you know, a lot of a lot of the people I, I graduated high school with almost twenty years ago. Um I I can see what they've gone through just by their physical image. I'm at, I'm at that point, you know, where in my understanding and my awareness, where like I see where people, how much people have gone through just by looking at the physical image. And it's, it, it truly holds. They I don't mean, that's they hold on to it though. Like you would look, I've yeah. been through a lot my whole life. You would look at me and you probably wouldn't, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I think I'm a little kid or something. I had this little. Honey, I'm gonna tell you a story. I had this girl. She had to be like 19. She tried to talk to me at the gas station earlier today. And I'm like, yeah, I'm like, how old is you? She like 19. I'm like, you know how old? I'm like, how old do I look? She like, what you like 22? I'm like, no, nah, I ain't no 22. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I I, I understand. I I kind of been through a couple of circumstances like that myself, and and you know it, it's. You know, and when you got people approach you like that, you, it, it gives off the energy. You know, it feels good, but you I don't mean, want it to. It, you don't want it to feel good as good as they want it to feel good. Like sometimes people are looking for pleasure. You receive pleasure just in the moment of being there. You're like, oh, well, you look good for your age. Wow, like, well, I'm glad that like what I'm doing is actually, like, you know. Um, it, it it's it's presentable like it's recognizable but like it, it isn't about that it's just about living life peacefully i'm not here to look good i'm here to live good but no when i was younger i used to look older though like i was the younger kid that you would send into the store to buy stuff because they knew they wasn't gonna id me <laughs> oh, oh yeah i know what you're saying yeah well i mean I, I I think I looked a little bit older too in my younger years. Like you know, I actually look young. Like when I look at pictures of me in high school, twenty years ago, I feel like I look a lot younger. Maybe <laughs> or around the same age as I don't know. Yeah. I mean, but yeah, that's because you was hold. That, when I was younger, I was holding on to a lot of stuff. I was like a yeah. I was kind of yeah. like an angry kid. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I yeah, I so was I. So was I. I went through a lot as a kid and I held on yeah. to a lot. And that and then yeah. I had to learn to let it all go. Yeah, once you let it go, it all go away, man. It's yeah. the stuff weighing you down that weigh you down. You know what I'm saying? You can use that precisely. One day. Precisely. <laughs> I'm gonna keep moving forward the uh messages if you're okay with that. Good. It's really the ideology, yes. Oh my goodness, he's talking about mourning that thing, putting that death to the old stuff. Yes. Oh my goodness, oh, this is so deep. Ah, uh, my mind <laughs> loves this conversation, and so many things I want to say, and it's like, mm, where do I begin? Ah, uh, I get so excited. I'm so passionate about these conversations because they're like so fucking groundbreaking. But yes, you have to get rid of the ideology that you associate yourself with because you are not. Any of the things that you associate with your, once you, once you destroy your reputation, then you can be free, bro. And it's so crazy because, ah, oh, <laughs> forget everything that you once thought you were. These are all fucking programs. Dismantle all that shit. Get in solitude and let God show you who you are, who God created you to be. That is, that is the fucking key. I'm telling you guys, isolation for two years has done next part right here forbidden okay <laughs> i might have forgot the question that i wanted to ask you but i want to ask you or i guess i want to conversate because i guess it's not really a question because i know the truth um i guess what i want to ask is what's your perspective on dharma because my understanding after you know looking into the buddha religion and um the culture Dharma is the way to free yourself. Now, I've been studying a few different cultures and religions because I love to read. I love to learn. Um, 
I'm a psychosexual, like intellect all the way. I love a brain. Oh my goodness, I just want to sink my teeth in it. Not even my teeth, just my my tongue. I really want to get in the oozy goozy crevices of it. And it's like <laughs> I don't want to miss not one drop of knowledge, and then it's like I want to pour back into it. Like I want to feed it knowledge out of you know out of me as well. Like I just want it to be like this never old, never ending stream of knowledge. Like oh my goodness, like I think about a mind. And, oh. <laughs> All right. Uh, and and uh, to Buddhi Dharma, um, I'll keep that in mind. I, I'm going to keep going the kingdom within. I'm going to keep going, but I'm going to keep the Buddhi Dharma in mind. Uh, um, one of the things I can say just really quick is that as far as as far as through my research, the Buddhi Dharma, uh, he went to the emperor of China, and the Buddhi Dharma said. He he. What he wanted to do was to take a bunch of manuscripts and to translate them into another language. And the emperor asked the Bodhidharma, like, "What would I receive as merits, or what kind of merits would I receive by doing this?" And Bodhidharma said, "None." And he goes, well, then who stands before me? Like, and the Buddha Dharma was like an enlightened human being, like a significant enlightened human <laughs> being. And, you know, and, and he was like, well, who stands before me then? And the Buddha Dharma says, I don't know. And that is the highest form of understanding is when you know, you don't understand that you understand anything about anything. That is the <laughs> highest level of understanding that you can be. Is when you say, I don't know. And I also don't know who I am, but I fundamentally feel what I am. But even then, feeling what I am, I don't know what it is that I am. That is powerful. And that makes people like us the most dangerous people <laughs> in the world. Because People like us who do not fear death are dangerous to a society that perpetuates the fear of death. They want you to fear death because they want you to fear how you should live your life before it. Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and keep playing because I got quite a few messages. It, like, Yeah. <laughs> I hope uh, I get through all these guys. I'll, I'm, I'm going to push it one more half an hour, and I will. Um, yeah, I'm going to try to get to. If you guys can resist um, just sending any more messages so I can blow through these, that would be highly appreciated. I will try to get back to the uh, the answers as best I can, and um, I wish I had more time in the day. Um, I know. Go ahead. We we we'll get to but, the yeah. We're, we're, yeah, we're going to keep going with this. Yeah to ask so that's yes okay thank you spare okay i wanted to ask you what do you think about oh shit it left me just as quick as it came damn spare what was it okay let me let me concentrate focus <clears throat> there you go boom the laws the karmic laws but not even the karmic laws the laws do you think my opinion and how everything went a bonk is because we forgot the laws that reign us, you know, the laws of nature that applies to us because we are part of nature as well. Um, you know, the cabal, you know, we got the universal laws. We got the law of karma and dharma. We got the laws of cause and effect, you know, the law, um, the law of correspondence. All these laws that people are not aware of, so therefore they break these laws spiritually and they have to deal with the consequences in the physical, you know, materialistic world. What's your views? Oh, yeah. Mm. Well, that's that's what uh, we was talking about the laws and all that. Yeah. yeah. Well, I believe that I, I'm just going to give a really quick uh, answer to the best of my ability. Uh, maybe she has more to say, but um, um, I believe that everything, like I said at the beginning, is mind. Everything is mind in the universe. It's an intelligent organism, not a mindless mechanism. Um, and uh, therefore, we play a part in that entanglement. Uh, 
And uh, everything that we think and do as an act upon our uh, intentions uh, cause karma. Karma is not ne neither just positive or negative. Uh, karma means action. So everything that we do as action have consequence. And even consequence neither means positive or negative. It, it's both. So I mean, that's, that's just that's just one of the laws. <clears throat> For every right. action is a reaction. For everything you exactly. do, it's going to be something that's going to happen. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Cause and effect. So yeah. like when we talk about karma, we're talking about what we are creating for ourselves and our environment by doing through this, this physical form what we do. So when we commit an action, we're going to have an equal or more intense reaction to whip us back into shape. And that reaction is the energy we put out to make uh, from the first initial first action you know and our reaction depends solely on how we receive the response of our karma and and our karma is supposed to um be a window of opportunity to read what it is that we are doing in our life by depending on how the environment reacts to us from our first initial reaction to it So I'm going to uh, I'm going to continue with uh, King and Priest here. Um, he's got some uh, some messages here. I'm going to just kind of tap on that real quick and blow through these. <clears throat> Basically, to activate the mind of the brain through the pineal gland. Okay, you got to feed it sunlight. All right, sun gazing, um, any part of. Uh, to feed that melon all right uh depends on how much melon you have uh but sunlight activate the pineal gland uh and and is you fully awake and it will open that third eye as well uh, but get that sun's gaze uh or however you need to get that uh feed that pineal gland uh in that spiritual awakening thanks Facts, my friend. Facts. I'm going to keep going. Uh, uh, no, everybody, um, mind you, um, um, from the, it, the, the severity of the melatonin in the human body with sunlight. Sunlight activated everything, y'all. Okay? Sunlight. So, once you get a high dose of sunlight you can't buy the melatonin out of the stove it's the fake all right but you could try to get some d3 to enhance the sun mm -hmm. gazing uh to activate the brain of spiritual awakening uh but uh like i said once your third eye open with the sun gaze or get as much sunlight on your skin uh or sun gaze to en to en enhance the brain ways uh, try not to cut your hair or dye your hair. Uh, I'm just letting you know, get that sun. You're right. You're right. I mean, uh, from light comes life. With life comes light. I mean, we everything, are that light. Everything, right. everything living needs the sunlight. Everything lives exactly. on the sunlight. Everything that if you put any living thing in the dark with no sunlight, it would eventually die. Exactly. Um, and and, and uh, a deeper understanding of this is when you realize, I, all right, I, I want to say this is really quick. I, I, I really like I, I am all about truly getting people to understand their their deepest level of origins of being you, you, whoever's listening to this, whoever is listening to this. You invoke light into being. Mm -hmm. You do. When you understand that you are your freest. Let me explain it in this way. Everything in life is transactional. Everything. The environment creates the organism. The organism creates the environment. The There needs to be 
an environment containing an organism to invoke life, but there needs to be an environment also containing a sun to give life to the <clears throat> organism. But without the organism having eyes, there'll be no purpose in seeing anything, which means that with eyes, you invoke light into existence. You are meant to see the universe because you are the universe seeing itself. This is the deepest core of what it is to be alive and exist. That you are the very purpose of the universe existing. What would be the purpose of anything existing if you weren't existing to observe the universe existing with you at the same time? This is the most beautiful transaction of energy, of existence, that, that, that you are life. People say, you know, like, well, you are this and you are that in the medical field. The fact is they're lying to you. I'm sorry to tell you, they're not lying about everything, but they have explanations that have no metaphysical spiritual explanation if they did <laughs> we would live in an incredible world but the fact is you do not beat your heart you do not digest the food in your stomach you do not tell your cells in your body what to do you do not control or, or you're not even aware of the organs that are inside your body until one of them begins to misbehave. Because until everything, un until something goes wrong, you don't realize how everything was perfect. Yeah, it's like a vehicle. <laughs> right? Exactly. It's just like a car, going back to what we said earlier. It's just like a car. So, in that sense, when, um, just trying to find a way to say it real quick. When um when you experience this disconnection from your body, what you know, you have this since this peculiar sensation. What is what is beating my heart? Because, like, you know, you're taught that you, you, you don't. You don't. You don't beat your heart. You don't, like, you know, you, 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 uh, you, you can control how you breathe. But eventually, you'll go back to an unconscious state of breathing where you are doing it, but you're not conscious of it happening. But when you bring consciousness to it, you can control how you breathe regardless of how you breathe. You, you can hold your breath. You can shallow your <laughs> breath. You can use like you know, your breath for types of meditation. But the fact is, eventually, at some point, you will go back to absolute unconscious breathing. And you won't even realize it's happening while it's happening. So you're not doing the breathing either. You're just, you just can be aware of it. And you don't have power over the way your body functions and you can't change the way it functions unless you do something to damage it. Like, That's why you're supposed to take care of it, so it can take care of itself. Exactly. Exactly. So, but there's even a deeper level, okay? We're peeling off layers of an onion here. The deeper level is you do beat your heart. The truth is you do digest the food in your stomach. You do tell your cells in the body what to do. You do operate your entire body. You are like I, I, I are you I mean like one of the things is are you are you the thinker of your thoughts? You said are what? Are you the thinker of your thoughts? Am I the thinker or no? My my thoughts come from my mind. Well, I mean, from you, you say you say my mind. I mean, at the very core of, of of all things that are esoteric, you are right. 
but it's the understanding. It's it's the layers in between of what is mine and what is yours. I mean, my, I mean, what is what is mine and what is yours? I mean, it's the what? mind. The mind. The mind is, is the mind is infinite, the, right? I mean, yeah, the mind. No, is, I'm talking about like your mind, like your like your like your brain. Like your, well, your brain. I mean, but what I mean is, I mean, let me put it to you this way: I can say to you, my friend. Mm-hmm. This is my body. That is your body. Okay, that's that's mm-hmm. correct. All right. Even though I believe that the skin between my body and your body is the bridge between what connects us, you can say to me that this is your mind and this is my mind. That's true too. But you cannot say either. You cannot say this is your life and this is my life. No, I'm saying. Well, let me just say your mind in general. You know what I'm saying? The mind in general. The mind in general is nothing of a collection of everything that has happened through your experience of being here. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, yeah. any 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 thought or any anything that comes from the mind comes from a prior experience or a prior thing that I didn't saw or heard or whatever the case may be. Right. Right. Like um well, I mean, the only the only thing I was trying to like, uh, I guess, kind of capitalize on, um, I, I got carried away. Honestly, I apologize to everybody. Um, <laughs> was um, the fact that you are the self, that you are it, and fundamentally, of uh, above all things and below all things, you are it. You can people say. Which one are you, the yin or the yang? Well, the yin and the yang are both brothers. The black and the white cannot exist without each other. They are brothers. They need to exist so the other one can exist. We are that representation. The the the, the yin and the yang also also represents the folding of brotherhood. The 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 collapse of which is is unity, where one and the other. Uh, uh they 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 cradle they they uh embrace one another in, in such a way where it's like an acceptance where they they um there's a word i'm looking for but it's just not coming to my mind at the moment but they they uh they it's an embracement you know they they cuddle one another um even though that one is black with a white spot and one is white with a black spot they are one in the same just as they appear as opposites, but opposites are duality, which means duality is subjective because neither one of them can exist without each other. They are brothers. It's, it's two sides of the same coin. And, mm-hmm. and, and the reason why I'm talking about this is because without one, we cannot have the other and in such a way where you realize that the self, what you are as a self, your body is yang and what you claim to be as an understanding, the the acknowledgement of acknowledging is the self. The self has been always associated with the body, which is yang, but ying and ying and yang, which are two forms of the same body, it's spirit and physicality, are both one and the same being. And we are all mult, multiplicities of a non and non physicality and a physicality all at the same time this is the most complex form of being which is why they call it mind body spirit complex no uh, man you you i mean so you believe you are the mind body and the spirit i believe that it participates as one in unison that it, it takes the experience of mind body and spirit to complete the experience as mind body and spirit it's a I mean you can't I mean you I mean I understand what you're saying, but you you ain't nothing but the spirit. You ain't the mind. Right. You're right. But I but the spirit needs the body for the enhancement and evolution of the consciousness, which is only spirit, which is only mind. So it's 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 a transaction of environment and transaction of non-form. Of the form, I mean, mind and spirit is two different things, though. You're right, right, but they all work as one. It's like saying the mouse does not need the computer. I don't need the computer because I'm only the mouse. 
but you need to plug the mouse in in order to get the information off the computer that you need. Like, you know, it's one of those things that it's just, it's a need of itself. It's itself because it needs to be itself in order to accomplish what itself is trying to accomplish. So, yeah, it, but it, the it, mind, but the mind, come, it comes with it's it's it comes with the body. It's a you know what I'm saying. It comes yeah, with the body. yeah, yeah. I know exactly what you're saying. I mean, I I do. <laughs> I, I I'm on the same. Yeah, <laughs> we're totally on the same page, and, and, and it, it, it's complicated because it's like I can't associate myself with my brain, but I can associate myself with my mind because the mind and the brain are not the same thing. Equivalent. Um, Equally, they are they are two different aspects as to how one functions. When you came into this world as a newborn child, you knew nothing about nothing. But you filled your brain up with information and you, but you were taught information from this source and that source this family member that friend that friend's family member and whatever like you know and over the years you accumulated all of this information and but some of us accumulated information where something deeper than the information itself stood dominance in our state of being where it was i hear you but i don't think i can believe what it is that you're trying to teach me even though like i can see that you believe what you're teaching for some reason i'm not feeling that what you're saying to me is the absolute truth because something deeper within me is feeling that there's more to it than what you're saying. And a lot of people around the world are kind of, have been accepting this rather than ignoring it. I think we've gone through centuries and centuries of people just ignoring this, um, have been ignoring this, uh, this feeling, this intuitive feeling of, of within themselves. But people are beginning to listen and they're like, oh, well, I mean, your structured belief system is against what I believe. Because what I believe is that there's no structure to the system at all. There's just being and the experience of being before this e eternal, immortal spark of divine light within me returns back home. And potentially, maybe, I, I mean, I feel like I got it this time. But I might have to come back because who knows how much more I have to get. That's not in my knowing. And I have to accept that and release that. And and that's part of the things, I think, of, of the human experience is to just let it all go. Because when you fight against the current, you wear yourself out and you accomplish nothing. But when you submit to the current you become the strength of the current and this is the way our lives should potentially i think and naturally be but forces higher than ourselves in this world have distorted that teaching and that's why i feel like i'm here is to point that out to people At least a part of it. I'm trying. <laughs> it takes footsteps at a time. I'm going to keep moving forward with the uh, messages. And I, I, yeah, I got like nine minutes. I, I said I was going to go at 2.30, but I push it to, I'm going to push it to three. But yeah. Oh, this is the thing. Oh my goodness. Um, you say you never need isolation. It's fucking hot in here, child. Mm -mm. About to burn up. That's what I ain't gonna do. Who is hot like menopause? Okay. Um, you say you never need isolation. That's cool, fine and dandy. But let me tell you something. Um, <laughs> God puts me in isolation often, very often. Um, to reflect to ponder, to think, to learn. 
Sometimes when, you know, you associate yourself with this world, well, really every time you associate yourself with this world and you're getting open to God, what God would do is separate you so that God's voice will be louder than the world's voice in your head. Creating stillness within you in your mind. I'm a Virgo. Isolation. I find peace in solitude. <laughs> I really do. I love silence. I love just being, you know, and existing and enjoying. Awesome. Okay. That's cool. <clears throat> no, I was just saying I don't isolate it. I mean, as far as like your mind and stuff like that, I mean, I could clear my mind and isolate myself in a group of a whole bunch of people. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Forbidden, me and Kingdom was talking about this yesterday, man. Shit. Some chew from this chat. <laughs> Shit, he broke it down and Forbidden didn't break it down. The experience of experiencing being the experience or experiencing the experience. OMG. Yes, you better tell them the fucking truths. It's so, it's so crazy because I try to explain this shit. Like the level of awareness that I'm on. It's like, oh my goodness, how do you explain? It's like most average people just don't pay attention throughout life. They don't care about things such as sort. They think they're supposed to come down here and work a nine to five job. They don't think that they have to do any work on themselves. Um, or if they do, they fall into this um, area where, you know, it's nothing wrong with therapy. I never really clashed good with therapy being a foster kid and like my experiences and killing me and everything. But what I will say is that I don't believe in labels. Nobody labels me anything because it's like trying to put God in a box. You can't define me. I'm not saying that I'm God, but the God within me is acting out in the Just babies. Aw, it's a little sweet sweets. Y'all got y'all whole life ahead of y'all. Um I say stay in the word, bruh. Stay in the word. Keep on experiencing life and being the observer and, you know, collecting data and processing and understanding and um, loving, you know. Just keep on keeping on shit. S seek the truth and you shall find it, child. Seek the truth and you shall find it, child. I'm telling you, that is the way to go. Um, <laughs> child, I'm sipping on some... Uh, ginger and lemon tea you already know gang gang we gotta purify our souls bodies and our minds tea keep me saying you know what tea could save a life bro mm -hmm. they tell you about that twix bar and that snicker bar but they don't tell you nothing about tea oh lord tea has saved some lives child won't it won't won't god do it come on he said he would come on now come on <laughs> I'm gonna keep going. You 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 have to um let go of your inner demons. You really have to kill those inner demons in a form of forgiveness, in a form of letting it go. For um, there's a lot of ways of killing that inner demon, so you won't, so it won't affect your uh, your youth because you are within out. All right, so if you constantly uh, loving peace, um, kind. You know, that inner light uh, resonate through love, uh, peace. Um, uh, it, it also hyphen intuition. It hyphen your spirituality of in light. Uh, so it radiate in your charisma and you'll constantly look vibrant, young, um, healthy, because love resonate uh, and it hyphen you. In every way, I could go on and on for uh, right, right, I agree. We're almost down to the bottom right now. Um, and uh, I got a few more minutes, so I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and finish these uh, last couple of uh, messages up and then we'll capitalize on the conversation. And which I have thoroughly enjoyed, by the way, my friend, um, along with all the listeners and all of their input. Um, it, I, I'm very blessed today to have been participating with such like-minded higher vibration um spiritual people as yourselves that, that that recognize that there is something far more fundamental to reality than what we have been taught and and that we all can um 
you know, we can go out into this this hostile, chaotic world and at least offer some light and peace to people to try to, like, change the paradigm from what we've grown up in into the future generations uh, making something different for them. So that that's a beautiful thing. I think that's that's probably, like, the most beautiful of all essence. Didn't the plant grow to give oxygen to the human being because the human being needed oxygen and in return the plant needed carbon dioxide (laughs) so you know didn't didn't uh isn't that such like the way that things are that we had that transaction between ourselves when it comes to our own personal um evolution you know our transaction between beliefs as an evolution like i mean like that that this is this is an this is a beautiful unraveling of untangling the tangled yarn the ball of of yarn that that they say is untangable um so i think that's what we're in the process of and it's nice to be participating with uh people that actually understand that um we are in that process and we are part of it. And, and, and a lot of patience is involved with this. That's what people don't seem to really understand. This takes patience. This takes will. I know you did ask for us not to send in um, anything, but I do have something I did want to quick um, back up on, um, what the guy had also put down about the sunlight and sun gazing and melatonin. I just want to throw this also out there just because I'm all about education and liberation. I do apologize because I know that you did ask for us not to do this, but I'm going to do this and you'll understand why. Because I want to go further into what he said. Um, when he said that, another way that you can get collagen is through your greens. Your greens, what they do is they oxygenate your blood cell, but not only do they add oxygen to your blood cell, they oxygenate your blood cell and makes more red blood cells. It also gives you collagen, um, and your greens give you collagen, and collagen then turns into melatonin as well. So some other ways that you can get it, you know what I'm saying? I just want to put y'all on, educate and liberate. Don't hate me. I love (laughs) y'all. No, you're right. You're right. Um, uh, a lot of mystics in our ancient days, uh, and even some in modern days, actually do uh, a diet of sun gazing. They bring uh, sunlight into their pineal gland, and uh, I actually do this once in a while myself. I sit and I'll, uh, without blocking my forehead, I'll uh, sit and and I'll stare with my eyes. Um, at uh it, it, i have more success at uh dusk where the sun's setting um dawn is a little bit more intense for me but that's something that i'm working on like I, but i've noticed that like certain uh certain understandings certain flows of energy through me certain uh, like when you understand how to identify ego which is the thing that is the unsatisfied um, part of your life where nothing is satisfactory, then you realize that uh, you real well, I, I guess honestly the, the way to word it is um, there are ways to drown out ego. And a lot of the, one of the ways that I found out to drown out your ego, the the voice of the unsatisfied. Why are you trying to drown out your ego, man? Well, I'm not trying to drown it out, but I am trying to bring more light into the body as a as a part of my, uh, as a part of my uh, evolving spiritual condition. Um. You can never get rid of ego. It's not something you can get rid of because you cannot get rid of ego as long as you have a body. The body is your ego. The body is. I mean, the... why? You, why you? Why you trying to? Why are you trying to suppress it? Well, there is the part of you that wants, rather than the part of you that recognizes what it needs. Uh, there is the part of you that is full of desire. And, and, and you know, just like uh, what they teach in Buddhism, 
How do you desire without desiring not to desire? Yeah, but so, the desire and your ego, your ego is just basically it's basically how you and your ego is basically how you feel about yourself. You know what I'm saying? Your ego is your ego has nothing to really do with your desires. It has a lot to do with your desires. It only depends on the way in which you handle the desires that comes from spirit. Spirit and ego are, are, are the two sides of Christ consciousness and the devil's playground. And if you have a lot of trauma in your life, your ego is going to feed your trauma, which means that everything outside of you will become a perpetual state of of uh, a perpetual state of uh, uh, it would be an enemy. It would be an enemy. Yo, no, uh, your, your ego, your, no, your ego, your ego is your. That's not your ego, though. Your ego is just your self esteem. You know what I'm saying? Or how you? It's just that's all it is. You know what I'm saying? It can it's be. Not, it, it, it can participate in it as such. Yes, I agree with you, hundred percent. Because I, I mean, there's no, there's no fundamental way to kind of get to the core as to what ego is. Um, but what we can understand is that everything that happens in our life, ego does play a specific part in it, even in the spiritual development. Because the ego is not your enemy. But it does have this flight or a fight or flight mode that happens where everything outside of you is a threat um, because it, it, it knows it's temporary, which is the body. Like everything that everything that keeps you surviving, it's in survivalist mode where spirit is eternal. It's at peace. It knows it can't die. So therefore, there is no threat to be threatened by. So there is this equilibrium uh, you know just as i said earlier with the yin and the yang as to come into this understanding to, to which one to listen to um and understanding which one is which and they're deceiving why do you think it says in the bible that satan comes as a messenger of light because it can come as a representation of spirit itself because they are both depending on the individual it can come just in the same way as spirit betrays itself because it's so subtle. It's so elusive and quiet. Yeah, Ego I mean, but all that all, all that comes from the mind, though. You feel what I'm saying? If you understand the mind, you will understand what, what, what comes from the mind, what the mind is saying, and what's the truth. I agree. But I think the only way to master the mind is the first master over yourself beyond the mind. Yeah, and you I, ain't gonna and, and know. You're not going to be able to decipher yourself from the mind if you don't know who you is. <laughs> right. So I mean, these are just tools. I mean, like, I, honestly, like, I mean, there, there's parts of myself I'm still working on outside the mind, you know, so I can get to that center point of the mind. And, you know, to be honest with you, I can be honest with myself. That I may not get to that in this lifetime. I mean, I've come a long way in 36 years. I mean, I've only been on the spiritual oh, journey man, you for... you can get to it. Come on, we, we could talk about it right now. I could get you through it. <laughs> I wish I had the time, dude. I really do. I wish I had the time. But, you know, um, you know, maybe next time. Maybe next time we'll get to it. Um, but, uh, yeah, mastering the mind, mastering your spirit condition, mastering over your ego... I think these are all fundamental points. I mean, we're talking about a, a trinity. We're talking about a trinity here. In the mind-body-spirit complex. The body is the ego. The mind is what receives both part, and there's the spirit. Spirit and ego are both under the influence of the mind. The mind is both under the influence of spirit and the body. So there is this transaction of becoming the masterful self. You are the only I mean, master the of yourself. I'm sorry. Yeah, but the, the only everything in your mind is every. I mean, your mind is your mind is is two things. Your mind is either in the past or in the future. You know what I'm saying? Everything in your mind is just your imagination for real. It's either your imagination or your memories. You feel what I'm saying? <laughs> well, 
I mean, well, I believe that time is nonlinear. I believe that you are existing both in present, past, and future all at once. And um, that's what I mean. The past that, and the future, the past and the future only exist in the mind. Right. And it, it really comes down to the way you respond to what is uh, an illusion at that time. But um, I, I, I believe that we also, as a physical being, neither exist in the in the past nor the future as a state of as a state of being when it comes to the way that you would have you use past to build you use the future for inspiration but there's more to it than that and i, I can't get into it now because i'm out of time but there's there, there's so much more to our evolvement. I mean, the Egyptians knew this, the Mayans knew this, the Sumerians and the Mesopotamians and the, I mean, they all knew this. The, the Buddha, I mean, our ancient ancestors all over the world, who apparently, by the way, had no contact whatsoever, all knew the same kind of thing when it came to our spiritual condition, to our ascension over mind, to our to our ascension over ego, to our connection with absolute unity, which exists in all things in reality and beyond reality. This is not a coincidence. Something was going on. I teach a lot about this over my, on the uh, Spoon podcast um, about the uh, a lot of these ancient texts and a lot of these um, uh, similarities when it comes to our uh, ancestors. But we're trying, to, we're trying to find the core of the onion without realizing what well, we've been doing this for a long time. Without realizing it's an onion, we've been trying to peel the core, uh, the, the layers off of the onion. But we're finally just now realizing that we can get to the core. Just as I said at the beginning of our conversation, we have put God in a box and locked him with a lock, but and, and we've lost the key. And that is the way that is the way we have treated source and, and our, our our singularity with source since for longer than I can even imagine. But that is the way we have treated it. We have locked God in a box and and lost the key. And I think it's up to people like us to get the word out there just as such that God is not something that you can put in a Cracker Jack box. So God is something that is dwelling within all things that it created because okay. it wanted to participate in its own creation. And that is the most beautiful masterpiece that not even Michelangelo could, could paint. <laughs> um, with that being said I'm going to finish up these last two messages and I'm going to uh, give you guys a farewell I have really enjoyed this conversation I, just wanna, I, I don't want these two guys to feel like they're being ignored so I'm going to go ahead and play them real quick uh, I used to look yeah you could the youth is is the beauty of how you mentally uh, 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 hold on to peace and, you know, not don't let stuff get to you of negativity. Exactly. Beauty is peace. Peace is beauty. Exactly. I mean, there, there's no other way to look at it. It's like <laughs> it, it all comes down to duality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you bring them into unison, the brothers. And and, and, we, and and it manifests as beauty. You can see it on people's faces. They, you know, I mean, but it's also accepting age also in itself. Like, you know, when you age, you know, I started getting salt and pepper on my beard. Um, I'm okay <laughs> with that. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it, it shows that, like, my skin looks like I'm young, but my my, my facial hair looks like it's, uh, like, I got age. And I, it, it's, it's just a way of... Um, it's wearing who you are. It's wearing who you I mean, are. I mean, so gray beautiful. hair, gray hair really doesn't mean you're old, though. You know what I'm saying? I right. Had, my little exactly. brother had gray hair when we was in high school. Right. I I started too as well. I had my first gray hair when I was 19. Yeah, I was like, so what? I mean... Right. <laughs> I was like, what? 
I was like, my mom was like, yeah, you've got a white hair right here. I was like, this is crazy. Like, and then I started going bald at 18. You know, so I, I just did the, I, like, ever since then, just done the whole monk thing. Shaved face, shaved head. Like, you know, I just stuck with it and it works. It just works for me. Like, you know, and I'm grateful for it. I got no reason to not be grateful for it. So, all right, one more. One more here. Open your eyes. You guys go listen to Moran Kurf. He's a, uh, I think he's a German scientist or a German neuroscientist, and he used to be a hacker, and he went to go study neuroscience, and he done a, um, he done a, a test on a woman, and told her to sit down in front of two podiums with, with touch sensor, uh, uh, plastic balls on them, so, uh, in arms width from her so she could grab out and touch them and they told her to touch anyone you want they were she was touching anyone that she wanted and then the, after that they told her that uh, they were telling her what uh, podium to touch by electrodes connected by her hair through um, a computer sending electrical signals to her brain telling her which part or, or which podium to press like that's not No, I do I actually have one more, one more here at uh, um, actually a little, oh, just a few minutes ago. Okay. All right. One more. You're talking. Oh my goodness. Okay. <laughs> what if I told you I'm on the journey to mastering my mind and I'm pretty good. The first thing you have to do is to watch your thoughts. Now that you know mm -hmm. that you are watching your thoughts, now you can watch and you can discern what is of your thoughts and what is not of your thoughts. Because the thing is, you don't want to be attached to your thoughts. You don't want to place you being on your thoughts or like your thoughts being in that accord. But you can watch it. If it's a thought of doubt, label it as doubt, knowledge it, let it pass. Through meditation, I've been meditating. I've been on my journey for five years. I've been meditating for about seven hours every night. And um, I'm learning how to stay still in my mind to see and to watch and to know. I can hear God's voice in my head. Um, it's some things that, you know, happens when you can control your mind. You're no longer a slave to your mind. Um, you can direct your own mind. That's the thing people don't know. Facts. Facts. Is um, a powerful thing, huh? It is. Facts. I mean, when you. Nobody thinks their own thoughts. Everybody's thoughts is of the singularity mind. I mean, that's a fact. I mean, if we knew what our thoughts are going to be, then why don't we know what the next thought that we have is going to be? So, I mean, these things seem to kind of come into existence out of nowhere, and they kind of drift into oblivion somewhere else, and, and we replace them with new thoughts. The thing is, what do we do with them when we are aware of them? And so, I mean, we. They can be negative, they can be positive, they can make or break our day. But the most important thing is how we react to them. And Because, I mean, if you believe what your mind is feeding you, what you are feeding yourself is an illusion. Because it doesn't exist except for within your mind. And that is one of the things, look, I'm going to say this, not because it has any true, like, you know, uh, domination, like, or, 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 or specific, like, you know, purpose in this podcast that you and I have both done for a while. But the health care, the mental health care in this country has got to change. There is no, there is no health care for the mind. I mean, like, yeah, oh, I go to a therapist. Oh, I go to, you know, I go to see a psychiatrist. No, that's not what I'm talking about. Man, there, you know, you know why? I know the reason. I know the reason for that. I can tell you that right now. It we are no living. It ain't, it ain't no, it ain't no money in, in, in telling people, you know what I'm saying, to stop believing that they're their mind. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, I'm not trying to tell people that they're not the mind. If anything, they are the mind. They are the very thing. They are the, they are the very essence of the mind. What I want to tell people is mostly this: 
You cannot overcome the obstacles in your life that we consider to be trauma or we consider to be anything of that sort without recognizing that what we are feeding our mind through that is only an illusion that the mind preys upon. But the what preys upon the mind comes, what I believe, from the ego. And I think you and I would have a really good time kind of breaking apart the aspects of the ego. The ego and, is probably one of the most mysterious participants in what it is to exist as a human being. Because there's a dark side to us and there's a light side to us. But all darkness and light come only from within us in each human being not i mean there's also that principle of the uh, of hermetic principle of the laws of the universe which is that everything is as without so within as above so below so i mean if, as human beings we are all fractal manifestations of all energies in the entire infinite cosmos you know and we're just playing a very small part in it all we're just as much of it when we're really the grand scale of it all but the fact is we need to learn how to harness that so we can change our world because if because if, if all of that energy powers the entire universe into order then we should be able to harness that energy into ourselves that we can you know have order and, and and bring order to our destabilized chaotic society that we call the human race. Mm -hmm. With that, uh, with, with that, my friend, um, I hope everybody enjoyed this. I have thoroughly actually enjoyed being on here. This is the first time I've been on uh, stereo for quite a while. I wasn't expecting such a great, deep, philosophical, metaphysical conversation, but we tackled a lot of <laughs> points today, Flipper, so I really enjoyed having you on here as a guest. I really enjoyed the kingdom within being participating and, and everybody else uh, uh, participating as well. Like A lot of good questions and good uh, you know, points of perception, and um, I'm, uh, I'm intrigued to come back and do it again. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, man. It's been great. It's been great. I, I, I literally feel blessed to have been participating in this today. So um <laughs> I'm gonna be put I'm gonna be putting this uh podcast up on Anchor for everyone that is here listening. Uh this will be on Anchor, which also means it will be on Spotify. Spotify's not doing too hot right now from what I hear, but it will be there. Um <laughs> but uh I'm also gonna get it up on YouTube. So um if everybody uh, wants to share this podcast and, and they're participating, well, yeah, if, you, uh, if you you could tag me in it and I'll share it. Sure, I, I yeah, um, I already started following you, so I will send you links to anything that I can and let you know when all of this is accomplished. Uh, probably take about a day or two, but um, yeah, this has been a great conversation. Uh, this information will be out there for the public to hear on different platforms, um, and uh, yeah, I will definitely be back again as soon as possible man uh everybody please who has not followed me follow me and i will be following you also in return so that we can um we can get into a conversation together in the future i am all about learning i am a, both a student and teacher here on this planet for as long as i can possibly be so um be humble, be love, be light, be a good uh be a good lesson and, and representation of the human race and the way you would like to see it become by being it yourself first. That's the best thing I that's the best thing I can tell you all. Yeah, that's good. All right, man. Everybody too. All right. Well, you have a great day. Um, thank you, everybody. Peace, love, and light as always. Bye-bye.